The August 12th, 2024 meeting of the Bay City City Commission will come to order. The City Clerk will give the invocation, which will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. Thank you. Will the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Dockett. I'm here. Rivet? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Brunner? Here. Hilliker? Here. Gerard? Present. Clements? Here. Morris? Here. Madam Mayor? Thank you. Is there a motion to excuse the mayor? Commissioner Gerard? Move to excuse the mayor. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Brunner? Second. Thank you. Is there any objection to excusing the mayor? Seeing no objection, the mayor is excused and we have a quorum. Next order of business is presentations, which we have one tonight on station five. I can't see the one. Now it is, all right. Wow. It should move forward or back pretty easy for you. Or sideways, maybe? Right. <laughs> there. There you go. Now I can see. Um, just a little more information regarding Station 5 that I was asked to bring to the commission. Uh, I've gone over the infrastructure and the, uh, the reasons why we closed. I just wanted to provide some in additional information on response times just based on what we've seen over the years. So. Um, this is a comparison of the average response times and, and some additional information regarding medical responses, especially. Uh, the Medical Control Authority is uh, run by McLaren, and it governs EMS response for all providers in Bay County. Uh, eight minutes or less is the standard for priority one medical calls 90% of the time. Um, that's a standard for the ambulances to meet within Bay City. It's a little bit longer if you're outside of the city for obvious reasons. Um, during COVID, I, I believe I mentioned this before, we ran all medicals from Station 1 with just a rescue vehicle. So that covered both sides of the river um, throughout the city. And granted, it was only a four month time frame, but it kind of gives us as an idea. We still were able to maintain an average response of four minutes and 54 seconds. And that's for all medical calls, uh, meaning we categorized them as priority one, meaning an emergency type call, or priority three, which is not emergency, which is no lights and siren, no emergent response. So uh, four minutes and 54 seconds was our average response time during that period. 90% of responses were 755 or less. Again, this is all responses, not just emergent responses. So we were well under the threshold set by the medical authority. Medical calls citywide in 2023 um, with four stations operating our average response time was 511. And again, all medical calls. 90% of responses were seven minutes and 41 seconds or less. Fire Station 5, uh, emergency medical response times this current year prior to, to closing, we had 133 total medical calls in that time frame. And the average response has been five minutes and 40 seconds. 92% uh, of the responses were under eight minutes. And the average and again, I'm not drawing any major conclusions off of this, but since closing for about three weeks, our average response time is still five minutes and eight seconds. We are, as uh, was brought forward, I believe, at a previous commission meeting, going to have some open houses at the various fire stations. We've publicized this on social media. But as you can see, station one, two, four, and five, um, even though five is closed, we're still gonna take people through it to kind of see the, the condition of it and um, what it's like there. But all of the fire stations are quite, quite old and uh, in need of some updates. So we wanna take the public through and anybody who's interested from four to 6 p.m. on those dates, uh, you will have a, a guided tour from some of our fire personnel in the stations. 
Uh, another thing I'd, I'd just like to bring up while we're talking about this and, and opening, uh, I guess, providing as much information as we can to the public and to the commission regarding our, our department is we have a Citizens Public Safety Academy that we are accepting applications for. Uh, this is something I would encourage anybody to join up. This is going to be both police and fire. You just have to live or work within the city to apply. Um, it would be a... It's a, it's a great experience for you, I guarantee you to have fun. The, the biggest part of it is I, I want people to interact and, and see our personnel on a one-on-one on -one basis. I've said this many times, but I, I put our personnel against any department anywhere. Um, they are class act individuals, a lot of good people, and you will learn that if you come to this academy. Not to mention you'll you know, get to drive, uh, well, not drive, but ride in a a police car through a uh, you know driving course, uh, do some firearms, uh, defensive tactics. You can get tased if you really want to. All sorts of good fun, but I would really encourage anybody who wants to, to dig deeper and, and see where we're at as a public safety department and uh, learn more about the department to join in on this effort. So in summary, real quick, I just brought up the uh, response times. We, we meet and exceed standards and we always have, we always will continue to do that. I, having a rescue vehicle out of Station 4 has, has shown so far to be a quicker response um, throughout the, the west side. Ambulance services are still the primary responders. They're the ones that transport people to the hospital. Um, we are there more as, as an assist to them, and they're still responding, you know, as they always have. Open houses are coming up as well as the Citizens Public Safety Academy for anybody who wants to see firsthand and gain more information. Anybody have questions? Thank you. Commissioner Bernie? Um, yes. I, I, okay. It is not COVID now, and COVID has passed. Lafayette is closing. Um, if there's a fire on, let's, let's use an example. There's a fire on Midland Street. There's a fire on Smith Street. What is going to be the response time for the West Side? You're asking if there's a fire in both locations at once? Yes. I, I can't tell you what the response time will be, but I can tell you that we will be relying on our partners as well as uh, you know, other, obviously other agencies on both sides of the river, everybody's still going to respond. And I still, will still be there in eight minutes or less. Um, wouldn't that be, um, wouldn't it be safer to have um, Station 5, uh, uh, there needs to be a safety net for the west side with, the bridge is closing, I mean, that with Lafayette alone. And um, the Independence Bridge, you know, we're having problems with that up and running. Um, uh, I feel that it wasn't a great time right now for Station 5. And, what, you know, I, I just feel that it wasn't a great time, and, and um, I wrote a resolution about it, so I don't want to go further into it, but I'm just wondering um, what's going to happen if, you know, like in Bay City, in this area on the east side, we have several fires at one time, and we have other, we have enough fire trucks over here on this side, so I'm just wondering, with multiple fires on the west side, multiple bridges are closed, closed, what will the West Side do? I can tell you, with four and five both being open, um, most days you still have a total of three firefighters. That's not even enough to fight one fire, let alone two. So they're still going to be relying on mutual aid from partners and um, fire personnel from the other side of the river. One more question. Is one life worth it? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's all, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gerard. Thank you, I, I do have a few questions. So station five, what is, say we, um, it's been closed, what is the plan for the usage of that building? I mean, what was? Is, we met to discuss, 
you know, what the plans were, whether it could be repurposed for something or sold or whether it needed to be demolished. Uh, that's still kind of up in the air as far as I'm aware. At, at one point, um, actually, Commissioner Bernie mentioned it. it was closed for a brief time frame. Do we know exactly how long it was closed for before? About four years. And then it was reopened when we changed to the public service model. Is that correct? Correct. And then, but we had an agreement with McLaren. They actually had ambulance services there. Uh, not McLaren, but MedStar. MedStar. Yes. And what happened with that agreement? They just decided that wasn't a viable spot to have their vehicle. Oh, they they were there up until we closed. But once we closed, they we had to give them like 90 days notice. But they decided to not station there anymore. So they just park in a parking lot rather than inside do, a garage. If they were given the option, do we? know if they would agree because a lot of a lot of the calls are medical calls correct and a lot yes. of the concern I, I think commissioner bernie alluded to it is if there's a train and then there's the bridge closures and in a boat coming through they still have an ambulance stationed in that area okay where, where is that they're out just of? not in a building they just park in a parking lot it's it's not a set location gotcha um I was just taking, I know I mentioned it last time, I was just a little taken back that we had the presentation and I guess I don't remember in the presentation talking about that set time on closure. And I think what the frustration of some of the residents will probably be coming up is we didn't have that plan in front of the residents for communication. So, uh, I mean, I, I'm looking forward to hearing from them and their concerns uh, tonight. I just, um, going forward, I think the main, the main thing, uh, whether or not we, we go to reopen or, or whatever is decided uh, is that that communication when we make a major change like this to impact residents that somehow we come out beforehand to communicate that and have some feedback back and forth. Yeah, I, I apologize if I didn't make my intent clear. I, I meant to, I just didn't obviously because people were surprised. So <laughs> that wasn't my intent. But it, I think if you come to the open house and walk in that, that building, um, you wouldn't want to stay there, and I don't think our employees should either. That that was my my biggest urgency with it. Gotcha. Completely understand. And and maybe um, it's something that like a commission could go to see when we're going to close some of this stuff out, so we can have a firsthand real feel. Just a suggestion. So thank you. Uh, uh, after the meeting, I'm sure Mr. Rao would be happy to take questions from you. Thank you. Um, yep, we'll, okay, thank you. Commissioner Hilliker. Can you just, um, since we're talking about the response times again, can you talk a little bit to the, the staffing, what this also helped kind of solve? You hit on it a little <laughs> bit with the three people to the fire fire, but can you talk a little bit more on that? Uh, the maximum staffing Station 5 ever has is one person. Um, when it comes to a fire, one person can do a lot, but they can't do much safely. Um, I, I think by having one person there, say there was a fire on Smith Street, and they get there in two minutes, uh, there's a high probability that they're going to put themselves in a danger that they should, they should wait for more firefighters to get there. That's my concern. Uh, the other concern is there's, there's really not much, even when Station four shows up and you have, you know, maybe three people there. Still, the, the, the rules require you to have two in and two out, so a minimum of four personnel. So you're counting on the PSO to be available to show up as well. So there's a lot of factors that, that come into it. So having one person at, at Station 5 doesn't necessarily mean we're fighting the fire any quicker. So what I hear you saying then is essentially, say it's open, there's two fires going on at once. We w we would have one firefighter and two fighter fighters versus a three and then some partners. Right. Can you tell me a little, uh, can you just tell me a little bit about the partners? Oh, when I say partners, I'm referring to Bangor Township Fire, Monitor Township Fire. Uh, on the west side, uh, MedStar is our ambulance service and they also have a mutual aid agreement with MMR if they're not available. So an MMR, um, operates a lot in Bangor Township and, and that area, so just backups, if yep. you will. And we, we go back and forth, too. We also help them as well. Like it's, a, yes. it's like a shared agreement, right? Yeah, absolutely. Great. 
Um, and so now with, with the one being shut, uh, I remember you talking about staffing. We were not eliminating any staff. We were essentially making it so that like, hey, three's going out at once versus one going out at once. Is that right? Um, it's, it's more so that we can have at least, always at least two people at station four minimum. That way one person can drive a small vehicle to medical calls while the fire engine is still available to respond should we have a fire. I guess uh, my point was we're not sending one, it's essentially right. two, right? So we're not limiting the amount of people or the people responding. It's still going to be the same number of people responding to a fire that we've, that we've had for the last several years. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Clements. Yes, thank you. Uh, thanks for coming tonight, uh, Director Raul. The mutual aid agreements we have, can you just, how does that work? When a call goes out, do they automatically come? Do we automatically go when they have a call or do they call us, we call them? How does it, can you just quickly explain how the mutual aid works? We have, well, we have mutual aid agreements with all of the surrounding agencies. We only have automatic aid agreements with Bangor Township and Hampton Township. So automatic aid agreements, as soon as there's a structure fire in either Bay City or Bangor Township in that area, of Bay City, I should say. Bangor is automatically dispatched, just like we're automatically dispatched if there's a fire in Bangor Township. Um, the other agencies, say Monitor Township and you know Portsmouth, all the other uh, surrounding agencies, we have to request. Um, they call them you know box alarms, uh, whatever level the on-scene commander feels is necessary, we'll tell Central Dispatch and they'll page out the other departments to come help. Perfect, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Brenner. Thank you very much. Uh, I do mirror a lot of the uh, the commissioner's concerns that the the way this was communicated was def definitely needed work, but uh, I do have a question. At this point, one of the uh, one of the issues that a lot of the residents that I spoke with were the what is what happens if a if we do have a train that is stopped on the tracks and somebody can't get to the scene of a medical emergency or a fire. This was, this was brought to my attention by uh, quite a few people. Uh, what, what kind of an answer are we giving in that respect? Um, it's it's you know, not much different now. Um, there's always, like I say, I shouldn't say always, but generally an ambulance is already over there. Bangor Township is already on the other side of the tracks, and they'll respond for a medical if we ask them to. Um, that's just something we have to request. It's not automatic like a fire would be, but we still have to request it. And then we, we can also, I mean, as long as Indy Bridge is open, we come across Indy Bridge as well. There's a lot of different ways to get there, and, and we always have had to rely on, you know, other partners. But how, how in, your, in your opinion, what would the response time be if, if access was blocked by the tra train and we had to request mutual aid? Generally, with Bangor Township, they're still going to be there within five minutes. Uh, I mean, we just had a, let's see, a, a dryer fire on Jeanette last week, I believe, and uh, Bangor Township was there within three minutes. Um, and we were still there under five, so. Okay, all right, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Commissioner Bernie? At one point, um, it kind of bothered me when you said um, one person, if it's one person, that one person, what is he going to do if he has to go on that call? And that that wouldn't be enough. And it just struck a nerve with me because when you take an oath and you have um, that badge on, and even if it was that one person, um, what they say is one person, no, no soldier should be left behind, no matter if you go one person, you are running in there, and you are giving that person CPR or whatever they need. So I think, um, with that being said, we need to instill that uh, more so with the officers. When when you said that, it kind of really struck a nerve with me, and that's all I have to say. Um, if we're even if it's one over there, it's something. It's somebody there, and we really do need. They need that fire station over there at any cost. There's somebody there, somebody to make them feel safe. 
And, you know, I just feel that um, a lot of the community over there, they feel left alone. That's all I have to say. But no man should be left, left behind. Thank you. Please save your applause, though. I appreciate it. I appreciate the enthusiasm, but thank you. Are you all set, Commissioner Bernie? Thank you. Yes, that's it. Commissioner Hilliker. I just wanted to speak a little bit more onto the relationships with that we have with our partners. Um, so this is, I think, a very good example of good teamwork within inter-counties, right? Because I don't think you guys sit there and look saying, hey, there's a fire over here. But that's just one thing outside of our line. We're not going to go to it. Um, but can you just kind of speak to your partnerships and how you guys, how long you guys have had these partnerships? Really, I would, you know, at the risk of slighting past people, I can only speak to my experience, but the fire chief that we currently have, Karate, is amazing at building relationships with the surrounding agencies. He has a, a on a first name basis with every fire chief in the county and probably the state. Everywhere you go, people know who he is. Uh, he's a very uh, dynamic individual and has, has basically made it not optional that we're working with every agency around us and everybody at the department has bought into his leadership. Thank you. Are there any others? Commissioner Morris. I just want to say thank you for uh, this presentation. Um, my constituents are still not going to be happy that the station is closing. I know that we would like to keep it open still. I do like the questions that was asked by the commission because it brought a lot more clarification to what's going on and what's going to happen in the future um, when there is a Station 5. Um, I have another question with Station 5. How much would it take for us to keep it open if we could? Um, currently, the you know, mold and mildew is, is probably the biggest issue that would have to be addressed. Um, which requires replacing the roof, which is, you know, six digits, probably somewhere around there, um, based on the various quotes we've gotten over the years. Uh, the, the unknown is once we take that off, um, there's a lot of uh, other issues underneath that we don't know until we dive in. Um, it's just very wet down through the walls. There's mold, mildew. How, how much it would take to clean all that up, I, I really couldn't tell you. Thank you. Thank you. All set? Commissioner Bernie. How do you know? Who told you these things that there was mold? Are you a contractor? Did someone come in? Did, you know, I'm, I'm not understanding um, being that it didn't go through us, the commissioners, I was shocked when when this happened with the closure. I usually this goes through the commission, and this never came through us. I would like to know who, because um, I know that we're over the fire department and public safety and all of that. I know that we do all the voting as we voted in. I'm really happy about. We voted in the package for your retirement and, you know, all these other things. So when it comes to um, this type of big um, uh, uh, situation in this, in, 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 in this whole thing, I would like to know where and who gave the okay for this. Because we didn't vote in any funding. We didn't vote in any, anything. For someone to come in, we didn't put a bid in. There was no resolution. There was no let's go behind doors and let's talk about this. Let's see how much money we have to put this together. I mean, because I see here Maple Park is getting another $1.5 million. I know that's not the cost, and it's not your fault. That's not the cost of a roof. I'm asking a question. Who told you to ask for that money? Um, if I may, Commissioner Bernie, we talked about this during the budget sessions, and we did approve the budget with this in it. So that's, that's where that originated. Um, 
Chief Rowell can talk about where the mold information came from, but as far as the finances, we did talk about it as part of the budget. Everyone in this city was shocked. So if we talked about it in the budget, I'm not gonna argue about it. You are awesome, awesome officer. I love you to death. Please tell me who ordered to shut that station five down because it, everything like that goes through the commission. Some of us are saying, like me, I don't know, I, I didn't vote it in. I sure in the hell didn't vote for them to pay $1.3 million for some kids to swing. I would have paid for the fire station's roof. Please tell us where and who gave that order. Commissioner that Ernie, if, if I could answer that for the director. Um, we did a presentation to the commission that explained why we needed to close the station. And at that time, we did not have any questions from the commission or any concerns about closing that. Well, you got them now. If the roof is, we say $400,000. If you're spending $1.3 million on a swing set, people's lives are in danger. Instead of swing sets, we need to get a roof. I understand your analogy, but that the swing sets in the parks are being funded by CDBG money, so it's a totally different pot. Fire departments are from general fund, so we can't intermix those two. Well, why are, why, why are the people, why, why am I so, so surprised? Mr. Commissioner Gerard, um, Ms. Hilliker even said we were shocked. It's not your fault. I'm, I'm not, you know. We were all shocked, even the people in the community, we were shocked. So since you're answering, city manager, please answer um, the community. We're all shocked. So since you're answering, obviously you got the real answer. Why is he saying that the rough and all these things are wrong with Station 5? And there's no bids, there's no contractors, there's no... Um, nothing that's telling us or showing us this is what's going on with it. And um, we've had people come in and check it and, you know, go through uh, uh, song and dance. So who gave him the okay to say that it was all right to shut that down? I don't know. We did. Yes. As a board, we did. I didn't vote July. on it. We did. You even said when you sat here last, the last meeting, you were shocked. It was in the budget. Commissioner Bernie, it's in the budget. So as far as the mold, you can see it. You can smell it. It's, it's visible. That's, you don't need to be an expert to see and smell mold. I would like to do my resolution. And I would like everyone in here to see. Okay. There's a time for resolutions. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, can we go to the map real quick? I do have a few questions. Thank you, and again, I respect you with everything. I, thank you, thank you. Okay, so looking at this map, um, my wife's parents live, um, I'm not sure. If they're, in, if they're in four or five, they're in five. They're in five, so my wife's parents are in five. So this is, this is dear and dear to my heart. I guess they're, they're pretty close to the line, but they are in five. So um, my wife and I talked about this over the weekend. We drove around and we looked at this and we, we tried to figure this out. And with the mutual aid agreement, there is a station um, just north of four and just west of five, right? So that's a banger station, but it's, uh, there is a fire station there, right? Yes, that one is actually moving in the future, though, FYI. Where is that moving to? To the old state police post on Euclid. Okay, so it's moving south. But it is on the opposite side of the train tracks. So one thing we have to do is we have to separate medical from fire because there's some confusion happening in the room between medical and fire. If there is a medical call, will one officer go in on a medical call and take care of 
whatever they need to take care of. Yes. Okay. So are they still able to meet the response time from station four on a medical call? Yes. Are there additional um, vehicles, maybe MedStar, maybe what's the other one? Patriot. MMR. Um, MMR. Um, those are also in the area, right? Correct. I know there's one on Euclid, um, kind of north. Um, so those also go to medical calls, right? Correct. Okay. And so, so on the medical side, we have this short up. So then the question turns to the fire side. And on the fire side, this is where I start to hesitate because with station five, there's one person in there. And I'm torn because I want our residents to be safe if there's a fire, but I also don't want a situation where we lose two people instead of one. Um, I've never had to run into a burning building, but I have had to carry an adult person uh, by myself, and it is an incredibly difficult thing to do. If you throw on, how much does turnout gear weigh? A lot. <laughs> like 80 pounds? Yes. You, you threw an additional 80 pounds of gear on top of carrying another person out, the likelihood of losing two people is going to go up dramatically. And the last thing I want is to lose two people. I don't want that scenario ever. I don't want to lose one person, but I don't want to lose two people more than I don't want to lose one person. They're both terrible options. So I'm trying to figure out how we can rectify this. And if we have one person at station five, that doesn't fix the problem on fire. We're basically keeping the station open for medical calls only that we can meet the needs of the community with only station four. Um, so I'm struggling with it. As far as the bridges um, having problems, they do have problems, but I do want to reiterate, and I think um, Chief Rao will agree with me here, 911 and the police and fire are in communication with the bridges and with the train operators to know where and when closures are to go around them. Is that a true statement? Yes. Okay. So we've got a situation where we did approve this in the budget. We have a good amount of money that we have to outlay, I'm not opposed to outlaying that money if it solves a problem, but I'm looking at this and trying to figure out what problem it solves, and I'm not seeing one. I'm seeing a, um, a concern for a problem, and I totally understand and respect that, but I'm not seeing an actual problem and how to write that. Um, I don't know. That's, that's, I'm struggling with it. So I... I do appreciate the, the desires of that district, but I'm trying to figure out how to make two ends meet here, and I, I can't do it. So, um, thank you. Commissioner Gerard. Just real quick, there was a question about having some of our uh, use of the DPW building for some of the fires. Is that something that's realistic or feasible? or It was, it was a question asked to me. The the DP the old DPW no no the 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 new the new building is there's space to have a, they have no space left in that building for especially for the fire department I mean it would have to be a pretty large area all right thank you if I if I may follow up on that um, if we're only talking about medical because we're not sending one firefighter into a building they really would only need enough space for the medical vehicle right. Medical vehicles, uh, and you don't send a, you don't right, have but, to send a full fire truck to no, a no. Call. You it, send the we can send a medical call, but if we only have, um, if we if we move that person from station four to station five, now they both have to have fire trucks to respond. That that kills the issue of having two people there, so you can have one person go to a medical and the other person still available to respond. If you put the medical there, then you won't have a medical vehicle at station four. And that's much farther away. Yeah. Pretty much everything. As you get further south, that's pretty far. There's also, I mean, there's no sleeping central. quarters there. There's no, there's a lot of uh, standards that have to be met for a fire station that would have to be added to that for it to work. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Seeing no others, 
we will move on. Thank you very much. Next order of business is the adoption of the agenda. Nope. Yes. Is there a motion to adopt the agenda? Commissioner Gerard, is there a second? I'm sorry, Commissioner Gerard. Move to adopt the agenda. Commissioner Brunner. Second. Thank you. Um, do any members of the commission wish to add any item to the agenda? Thank you. Commissioner Bernie. Yes, I have a resolution. Okay. So if you would make a motion and then be so kind as to read the resolution to us, please. Okay. This is my resolution. Can you have it be an actual motion? Motion, motion to add. Motion. Thank you. You need to make a motion to amend the agenda. Or that's how it has to work. You can smile all you want, but that's what we have to do. So if you could just say, I make a motion to amend the agenda. I make a motion. To amend okay. the agenda. Whereas the fire station five, located at 1209 East Smith Street in Bay City, Banks District. Whereas the services have been well needed and detrimental to the community for the North Side Banks and West Side community. Whereas Commissioner Elliott of the Ninth Ward at the time, 10 years ago, 2014, stated $5.9 million was built into the budget, which repairs would or should have been enough for the repairs, for the roof and everything else. That was only 10 years ago. It should be done. It should be good. Excuse me, Commissioner Bernie, if you want commission the, to add listen, onto I've had the enough of your mouth. Point right. of order. Point of order. Commissioner Bernie, you, you have to read the resolution as submitted or you need to change the, the resolution. Be it resolved that our previous public safety director, Michael L. Chins Chinny, ad advised advice be taken into account that the fire station five would increase the level of service to the citizens on the north side banks and west side of the city. Be it further resolved, station five talks and have talks and funding negotiations will be brought to the commission for a proper vote with a closed meeting for reopening of station five fire department due to the safety of our citizens of the North Banks and West Side community. Be it furthermore resolved that this resolution starts immediately. Thank you, is there a second? Commissioner Rivet. Sorry, Commissioner. Second. Thank you. That's what I thought. Okay. Will the clerk please call the roll on the amendment to the agenda? So a yes vote means you would like to add it, a no vote means you do not. Commissioner Rivet. Yes. Bernie. Yes. Runner. Yes. Hilliker? Yes. Gerard? Yes. Clements? No. Morris? Yes. Dockett? Yes. Seven yes. Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption as of the agenda as amended? Commissioner Bernie? Yes, I adopt it. Runner. Yes. Hilliker. Yes. Gerard. Yes. Clements. Yes. Morris. Yes. Docket. Yes. Rivet. Yeah. Hey, yes. Next order of business calls for the consent agenda. Okay. Do any members of the commission wish to make any change to the consent agenda? Commissioner Gerard. Uh, communication 15. Could you summarize it? The petition regarding quality of life policing. Thank you. Oops, are there any others? Commissioner Bernie? 
Um, I'd like to have, um, I can remove right now, can I? I'd like to remove 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 15, and 17. 15 is already removed, but could you summarize each of those as well so we're all on the same page? All right. Um, seven city manager recommending budget amendments in the amount of $190,000 for the fiscal year 2024 and 2025 budget. Um, eight, city manager recommending change order number one to the contract with Sinclair Recreation Holland, Michigan in the increased amount of 20856 for a Maplewood Park playground project. Nine, city manager recommending contract with Core Technology Norcross GA for E-Corp Citizen Incident Reporting System for Department of Public Safety in the amount of $5,000. 10, city manager recommending five-year agreement with OCV LLC for the cre creation and maintenance amount of a mobile app for Department of Public Safety of $28,500. City ma 11, city manager contract with Shaw Contracting Company, Bay City, for reconstruction of Morton Street and contract backing, patching for Bacchus Street in the amount of $1,088,792,000. 12, city manager recommending contract with Shaw, Bay City for Maple Park, Improvements for seven hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Okay, and then um, oh, you said fifteen was already taken off. Somebody? Just seventeen. Yep. Okay, and then we have seventeen, and that is about commission as a whole. Which I, 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 when you say as a whole, does that mean that I'm involved with that, or is it just you guys or? When it's commission as a whole, am I involved? Because I wasn't involved with this. I, I, I. It's it's just how minutes and meetings work. Oh, it's, it's, uh, you just involved me too. Because I'm I'm part of the commission. That's standard protocol commission. Okay, well I'm not involved no more. I'm, don't put me in that. When you, okay. when you when you guys do something, don't put me in it unless you tell me. Okay, commission as a whole resolution accepting the Michigan. Economic Development Corporation, $25,000. I don't, you know, because if things go down with, you know, with, with, with um, legal things, I don't oh, want to be Commissioner Bernie, involved. order. Commissioner Bernie, not a discussion time. Just a poll. Thank you. It's pulled. They're all pulled. Are there any others? You want to pull additional ones? No, that's it. Okay. I just want to pull my name, exclude my name for we'll, anything we'll that says... We'll have discussion. Okay. That's not the time for discussion. Just the time to pull. Thank you. Are there any others? To pull. Seeing none. All of those are pulled. Next order of business is for public input on the consent agenda. This is the opportunity for citizens to remove an item for consent on, for consideration on the regular agenda. If anyone in the audience wishes to make a change to the agenda, please come forward to the microphone, sign the registration sheet, state your name and address for the record, and the item that you wish to have considered. Please note this is not public input that is coming later, so if you wanna talk about something else, I think there's a lot of people here about the fire station, there is a moment for that. We just have to follow protocol on how meetings run. So if anyone wants to pull anything, now would be the time. Okay, seeing none, is there a motion on the consent agenda? Commissioner Brunner. Move to approve the consent agenda. Thank you, is there a second? Commissioner Gerard. Second. Thank you, will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the consent agenda? Commissioner Bernie. No. Brunner. Yes. Hilliker. Yes. Gerard. Yes. Clements? Yes. Morris? Yes. Dockett? Yes. Rivet? Yes. Seven yes, one no.
Next order of business is remarks of the mayor and the commission. If any of the members of the commission wish to make any remarks, now is the opportunity. Commissioner Brunner. Thank you very much. Uh, through the chair of the city manager, I've had a couple of people contact me in regards to the DPW building, the old DPW building. Um, they're concerned with the state of it at this point, the looks a tad unsightly, and they were wondering what are we going to be doing with it? Do we have to have this property remediated before we do any work? Are we going to be selling it? Uh, what are our future plans for this property? So you hit on it about remediation. So we're waiting for reports still on um, the environmental issues that are there because obviously we've had DPW operating there for years and years and it's on the river. So we're waiting for those to see what we can do going forward. About when, how much longer do we, do we think those reports are going to take? I have no idea. I mean, that we get one report and then they have to keep doing sampling and it just continues. So I can get you a time frame of like an estimation. Yeah, I'm not asking for, I'm not asking for everything right now, but if we could, uh, so I can keep the residents who, are, who have questions about it in yep. the loop. If you could just send me any information that we have, that'd be awesome. Yep, I can. All right, uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Commissioner Bernie. Yeah. Uh, Someone called me about um, a petition that was on the um, agenda, and it was about homelessness. Um, can I address that right now, or because I'd like to address that if I could? Yeah, you can talk about homelessness. Um, I'm not getting the just of someone telling a homeless person or a mentally ill person that um, they should be arrested or they are not allowed if they lay, if they have nowhere to go, if they have no shelter and they fall asleep on the street or um, something to that uh, matter that they need to be arrested. I don't understand that. There are people out here that don't have a place to stay, not because they want to, it's because under the circumstances. There are a lot of mentally ill people out here. They don't want to be mentally ill. They are, they end up in jail because people feel that they need to go to jail because that's gonna help them. That is not helping them. They need shelter, they need counseling. They don't need jail. Go to jail for what? To get back out here and do the same thing? Be homeless? What's in your medicine cabinet? People don't understand. Everybody has something. I don't care if the doctor gave you some Vicodin and you got a prescription for it and you think that you're not addicted. Addiction comes in all colors, flavors, everything. But to want to arrest somebody because they have nowhere to go and they have a mental illness is ridiculous. Get them some help. Get them some food. Take them somewhere where you know they can get some help. You got kids. You got a mother that's mentally ill and you want to hide it. You want to hide it. You got your kids that, that, that are on drugs. You want to hide it. Don't hide it. Get them some help. We have a lot of homes in the land bank that we could open up. We have no halfway houses here. That's why you get people that are on the streets when they get out of prison. Put them somewhere. We have, Bay City has money to do that. We have funding. But it's okay for you to have apartments and to get HUD money every month from the government. You get the HUD money. You get it before we even, or they get it in their pockets. But it's okay to do that. Use the funding money to open some of these homes up, to help these people get on their feet. What is so wrong with that? But you rather look at everybody like they're on welfare. No, we ain't on welfare, y'all on welfare because you're waiting for that first of the month check. You're the ones that are the poor ones, not us. We're paying for your yachts and your nice cars and all of that. 
If they stopped paying for it, if we stopped paying your rent for three months, you wouldn't have nothing. Help people like us stay on our feet like we help you every month to send your kids to wonderful schools. Have nice homes. Help somebody. You got friends that have had beautiful homes and yachts and everything. They lost their businesses through COVID. You can't even give your own friends a hand up. What kind of people are you? Rich, poor, black, white, green, orange. That's what I stand for. It's sickening. I hate it to see that. Shame on you. Stand up for one another. Enough, Bay City. You're not better than each other. You get some help for these people. I'm only one. You get some help instead of taking their money every third of the month and first of the month and saying they don't have nothing. Yes, they do. You got it in your pocket. Give back. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Commissioner Hilliker. So I had a question from a constituent regarding the purchase of a, the field behind Bala. Um, is there any public information that we can share at this time regarding that? No, we're still, um, we're still in the process of working on a development agreement, economic development is, but we will release it as soon as we know. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Gerard. Thank you. Uh, this last week there was a Lafayette Bridge meeting. Uh, it did change to a um, virtual format because they unfortunately, because uh, of the Coast Guard, had some issues with uh, some timing or, or finding out time frame. So rather than cancel it all together, they did a virtual one. Um, one of the things learned, it's not going to, the Lafayette Bridge is not going to close no sooner than uh, November 1st. Um, but I do have a question, because uh, it came up with traffic flow. Have we been studying or looking at when the traffic flow changes, um, there's the resident notice, there seems to be an increase in, in accidents, and is there, are we looking at efficiency when the traffic closes to do something? Could that be addressed or talked about? Do you want to come talk about that, Rachel? <laughs> Um, yeah, once uh, we knew that the bridges were going to be leased out, we've been looking actually for several years now at what the traffic volumes are going to do. We do have um, some great new software we're looking at, or that we have. Um, I've run several reports, um, even from the beginning when they came for presentations, we've been asking, you know, what do you expect for a diversion rate for this kind of thing? We've also talked with MDOT to see how this is going to you know, impact things. It's all kind of a guess right now. Um, you know, obviously when it does close down, when Indy closes down, we are seeing some really heavy traffic on Henry. Um, so we're looking at some other ways to get traffic around. We're trying to look at um, light timing and things like that. So we've worked with MDOT. They're going to be doing some signal upgrades and things like that that are going to help traffic flow. We. M25 is going to be well over capacity. Um, I've already talked with consumers and our lead service companies and let them know that basically once that bridge goes down the west side, they can't work because we have to have all of our local streets opened up. So, you know, we are kind of watching what we're doing, um, monitoring how it changes as it goes. Uh, there's still a lot of guesses, but... We, we have a pretty good idea. We've been able to see what's happening with that. All right, because one accident right in that main thoroughfare, then we're, we're backed up for miles and miles and miles. It is, and it, with it, it, we call it a cattle chute. There's really, um, you know, hopefully they're going to be done with that and get it open so we'll at least have two lanes in each direction. All right, thank you. That's, that's all I have specifically to that. Um, another resident asked me about this. We used to have the sidewalk program where a resident if they were interested, could um, have the city, they would uh, 
pay for it, but then on their tax bill, and we, we removed it years ago, that option. Is that something that could be considered if the commission chose to, or I mean, how much? So if, if I recall, it was removed from the budget because we didn't have the money to front that. Correct, we, we had that program up through 2017, I believe. And the thing is, it's great we get the money back, but we don't have the money up front to do it. We are looking at some options. I know Josh has been looking at some things too. Um, and that's one thing we have kind of talked about, but we don't have enough data put together yet to exactly see how that is. But the upfront money is usually the issue with that. Okay, yeah, I, I mean, the, the, the resident I talked to said he would love to put in a sidewalk, but it's that fronting of that money. Um, so, all right, understandable. Um, that's all I have on that specific, thank you. Um, tomorrow night, I don't know, is anybody here from the South End CDC? I'm just trying to see if Forrest is here. I don't want to steal his thunder, but uh, they have a back to school bash, uh, and they're gonna give away free backpacks, school supplies. Uh, South End CDC got together a few weeks ago at their meeting and put those all together for distribution. So I believe it's five to seven uh, tomorrow night at the Fremont Center. So uh, anybody's welcome to attend that. I think there's food and all sorts of games and other things and activities. Um, I don't know if you're gonna mention the uh, last week, the National Night Out, uh, I just wanna say kudos to the, everybody involved, our, our police department and all the different city departments and all the vendors and I know you awarded uh, all the folks, folks that came out and served food and so that was a fun event. I don't know how many, if we have an estimate on how many people attended but it seemed fairly significant. So kudos, kudos on that. Um, I did pull number 15, I guess we could talk about it there. There was a question, this is somebody submitted that to us, is that correct as a petition? Correct. Okay, there was some concerns that it, we were, there was a request to reduce our policing force, and there's no, there's no oh. request to reduce, we set Absolutely our budget. Absolutely not. Okay. No. no, I don't, I agree with you, the information is not accurate. Okay, that's, that's why I was concerned about that. Um, I know we have people to speak tonight here uh, about the homeless encampments, and I, I guess I, I'm looking to, to hear from them. Uh, I've talked to quite a few people about uh, the challenges. There, were, there was actually meetings that happened with the Bay Area Community Foundation all last year, is that, that correct, involving the city? Mm -hmm. it, yes, okay. Yes. Yes, uh, to talk about the issue. I think there's more work to be done. Um, I, I know the Good Samaritan was taking a lead on some of those efforts uh, for potentially a drop-in center, but the, some of the resources they were looking for, um, they're still being looked at. We put in our uh, community development block grant funds, there was some funding for uh, housing specific. Could that be talked to on, is Debbie here or no? She, she is not here tonight. Okay, uh, just, just to recap on specifically what that's for so we know because uh, I thought that some of that was set aside to address some of those issues um, and where those fundings can be used. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Clements. Yes, thank you. Uh, to the city manager regarding that, item 15, the petition regarding quality of life policing. That was sent to us and because it was labeled petition, we're required to place it on the ballot or on the on, agenda. Is that correct? Correct. And it, nobody that did come from anyone from the city, no, no commissioner, <laughs> no city staff. I know I saw the agenda item in it. There's people um, on that petition that don't live in the city. There were no signatures, just names listed. So, but we're legally required yes. to put it on the agenda. Yes, yes. Okay. you're okay. correct on all that you mentioned. Okay, thank you. And then uh, something positive over the weekend, we had the Hobie Kayak um, Bass Open Series here in town was hosted at um, WH Ales. Um, they had 71 kayak anglers uh, from 18 states um, that, that came to town and, and competed in their event. Um, from, I was actually on vacation myself and came back and saw the awards on Sunday, but from everything I heard, it was positive. Um, also have to give another um, shout out to Allison Riffle um, from the city that 
just does amazing work. I mean, she's not going to be here long with what she's doing because somebody's going to scoop her up because, you know, she's, she's in Pinconning Park at 4.30 in the morning taking pictures. Um, when BASS was here in June, she was at Vets Park at 5 a.m. taking pictures. And it's not just taking pictures. If you go to Facebook and go to Bay City Bass Fishing Series and look at that Facebook page and the the text, commentary, the the descriptions that are on there that to go along with the pictures, it is like high level professional work. So thank you, Allison, just doing an amazing job. Um, if we can pay her more, do it. Um, so it was, but really cool to see because the kayak thing is, I know nothing about it and it's a total different demographic of people but it was really cool to see them here in town. They had a great time, they loved it here. Um, they were hoping to have more than 71, but overall I thought things went well. So that's all I have, thank you. Thank you, any others? Okay, um, so I do wanna to touch on the, the homeless thing. Earlier today I spoke with the manager about the encampment that is just north of Liberty Bridge. Um, and we are going to have a presentation on that in the near future. I don't know if it'll be the next meeting, but it'll be in the near future. Um, I do wanna clarify some things and double check with the manager. Um, we do have ho halfway houses within the city of Bay City, right? We do. Okay, so we, we do have that when they are coming out of incarceration. Um, are we arresting people for homelessness? No, we are not. Okay, are we? Do, do we have staff or officers telling people that they should be arrested? No. Okay. We are I just, not. I just want to make sure that's not that. us. Yeah, it is not us. It's not like the that's, city basic. I agree with Commissioner Bernie that we should not be telling homeless people that they need compassion and help. Absolutely. I agree with that. And that's why the presentation is coming. And also, um, you know, we talked about what Commissioner Gerard was talking about with that, with the partner agencies within the community that have been meeting and trying to figure out a solution. Um, it is a tough problem to solve because a lot of times you offer services and they are rejected. And that is a really difficult thing to then do. You can't force people to take services. You can't force people to take help. You can only offer help. Um, so that's, that's tough. Um, I don't know the answer. So if, if somebody in the audience does know the answer on that, I am 110% happy to listen. Um, I don't know the answer. Um, I wish that there was an easy solution. I know that homelessness is a problem worldwide. Uh, I don't know how anybody else has fixed it. If, if you have ideas, I'm sure somebody will come up during public input. I'm 100% all ears on that. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you. Next order of business is the manager's report. Does the manager wish to make any uh, remarks? Um, I just want to swing back. I had two things that Commissioner Gerard had reported on about the MDOT virtual meeting from last Thursday. Um, they did discuss that the possible start date is November 1st. Uh, they have 30 months to do construction, uh, so um, they're possibly ending August of 2027 is the date that they're giving. Um, and also they did give detour information during that um, virtual meeting. And also National Night Out um, was last Tuesday. It was a big success. I feel like every single year I go, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Um, we had great vendors, great restaurants. Um, thank you to Public Safety for putting that together. Um, it's, a, it's an amazing event. Um, it's filled with volunteers and also the additional staff that brought machinery down and had booths and things for the children. It actually was a, a really nice night for families in Bay City. Okay, moving on, next order of business calls for public input. Under the rules of the city commission, each speaker will be allowed five minutes to speak. Um, Commissioner Clements, are you still going to the other meeting? No, I'm gonna hold here. Okay, uh, Commissioner Clements will serve as the timekeeper. This is the opportunity for citizens to address the commission regarding any agenda item or any other matter. If anyone wishes to address the commission, please come forward, sign the registration sheet, and state your name and address for the record. Shelly Kaju, 106 East Arnold Street, Bay City. Some of this has already been touched on tonight, but I would like to just elaborate a little and possibly open some things up for additional discussion in the future. 
On the morning of July 15, 2024, at approximately 6.40, the same day of the closure of our fire station 5, mutual aid was requested of station 8, Hampton Township, for a structure fire at 1200 Jenison. That call for assistance was denied at approximately 7 a.m. due to lack of personnel. Roughly two minutes later, 8 did report they could respond, but this shows us we cannot always rely on mutual aid. I expected that incident would have prompted one of you sitting at these desks to bring a resolution forward at that e evening's commission meeting, not five weeks later, to halt the closure of Station 5, requesting additional information and researching funding sources to allow this station to continue in operation before half of our west side was potentially cut off from immediate help. We were shown that relying on mutual aid from other stations is not always going to save the day. Thankfully, there was no loss of life that morning. Later that week, on July 17th at approximately noon, response time for a traffic accident near Jenny and DeWitt was negatively impacted by both traffic backups and a bridge, or bridges being up, something else that we as a community were told would not happen. These are all available in the scanner archives. Investing in our firefighters in their respective stations is an investment in our community. Giving them the proper equipment and living quarters shows them that they are cared for and respected. Providing strategic locations for them to be stationed also invests in their emotional well-being. They have stressful enough jobs without needing to be concerned about making it to their destination in a timely manner or upon arrival have their calls for mutual aid denied. They rarely know what to expect upon arrival to their job sites. That can't be controlled. It's your jobs to see to it that every other concern that is within your power be eliminated prior to those calls coming in. It is widely known communities are hurting for firefighters. Perhaps it would be easier to, to attract more heroes to our department if we could collectively show candidates, Bay City has respect for our heroes. And by continued investment and improvement in our stations, not continuously cutting their needed resources. Hopefully you consider this as a temporary relocation of services while Station 5 gets rehabilitated, rehabilitated properly, along with all the others. On March 21st, 2023, a group of concerned citizens and I went to a, commission, a county commission meeting to ask them to reconsider closing our pool. They ultimately decided to close it, but thanks to reasonable voices asking them for, to explore all the options, steps were taken to reconsider. We are grateful for our county leaders and their willingness to consider the greater good of what the community wants and needs. Now it's your turn to do the right thing and weigh those options. Some of you mentioned being blindsided by the news of Station 5 closing. This is perplexing to me, as I had a conversation on June 9th involving multiple people who informed me that on July 1st, the closure would be presented to the commission and then ultimately have the station close. People in the community knew that those of you sitting before us did not. That's shameful. Being in the flow with those who are impacted by your decisions will set you up for success. Those are the meaningful conversations that will keep you ahead of the game. Sound bites and selfies are nice, but they don't change policy. Leadership does, and I'm asking you tonight to lead. Our Station 5 has been closed in the past and reopened. According to a January 2014 Bay City Times article, our former public safety director stated it was obviously a very good thing for the residents of the banks to have that station open. It was to staff a minimum of one firefighter and one PSO at all times, but more often than not, two firefighters and have two PSOs in the area. Perhaps the current public safety method of service is not working, and that should also be reanalyzed if what we were promised isn't possible. I have drafted a proper resolution for you. While I cannot present this for a vote, I'm hoping one of you will pick it up and ask that the closure be halted immediately, research be conducted on what the building needs for renovations, seeking funding for such, and also making a full court press nationwide to attract much needed firefighters to our city with enough on staff around the clock to ensure the recommended two firefighters are riding on each engine to each call, not including the battalion chief. Good night. Thank you. Please, please hold your applause. Thank you.
Good evening. My name is Michael Walnikowski, <clears throat> and I was a resident at 902 East Indiana. My rescue dog was harmed several times by my neighbors. Uh, neighbors came to, into my house, packed my dog in 30 pounds of excrement, and DPS was unable to do anything about this. Uh, I reported this over and over to police. There's a very strong anti-gay sentiment coming from the Bay City Department of Public Safety. My neighbors at 109 Marquette were coercing minors to destroy my home. When I attempted to fix my home, the windows, the same neighbors were able to report me uh, and officers showed up with anti-stalking violations. This kind of behavior is ludicrous. Um, <clears throat> I'm a choral and orchestral composer and moved up here from Chicago in August of 2020. I experienced severe cybercrime, reached out to the police. They did nothing about it. I called the FBI, was instructed to file a report, a report with DPS. They're refusing service. Two of my vehicles were manipulated uh, car tampering, I come from a background where my family is very wealthy and involved in logistics. They are tampering with cars. I've reached out to the police and asked for help and they keep being denied service. I've written several complaints to the Department of Justice on the Bay City Department of Public Safety for negligence and abuse of power. Um, here are some other things about the Bay City uh, Department of Public Safety that I'd like to make mention this evening. <clears throat> Medical staff are, uh, at DPS are poorly groomed and unable to treat basic abrasions. Inmates who ask for pain reliever are punished with solitary confinement. Correctional officers refuse hygiene kits to men with HIV. Uh, DPS employees give false names for high-level staff, so filing complaints is a very difficult process. Employees are unable to distinguish birth date from infraction date so that you are not allowed hygiene kits. Probation officer Gregory Maxwell is unable to open a simple Microsoft Word document. I was asked to get a mental health evaluation and he was unable to open a Microsoft Word file for eight months. This, I mean, these are just poorly trained, incompetent people. Officers like uh, Resky solicit sex from inmates. <clears throat> After numerous times going to the police asking about abusive dogs, my home being vandalized, I had people come in that urinated and defecated all throughout my house. Uh, and people are and just constant refusing to help. I wrote complaints on severe animal cruelty, cybercrime, home invasions, theft, and car tampering to 10 officers at the uh, Department of Public Safety eight times during April of last year. They went on. Uh, unanswered. Correspondence on the same issues were sent to the in entire department on the 31st of May, also unanswered. Officers refused to accept ring video camera evidence from break-ins and excessive harm to animals. DPS refused to deploy a crime scene van to collect urine, ec uh, urine excrement, and fingerprint samples. They refused to investigate and prosecute, prosecute criminals, criminals associated with animal cruelty, car tampering, home invasion, and theft. I've reached out to law enforcement agencies in Joliet, uh, Illinois, Romeoville, Illinois, Countryside, Illinois, and have met privately with the FBI on these issues. They're all asking for uh, DPS to do their job and investigate the crimes. After months of, of sharing this negligence with the media, PETA uh, reached out to me and wanted to intervene. I hope that the commission will take them up on their offer. DPS's hostile working environment includes sexual predators and undereducated staff who target homosexual men by purposely making mistakes, refusing to listen to victims, and avoid investigation and paperwork. Mayor Newsom and the city commission members were made of law enforcement negligence in writing on the 12th of February of this year. Commissioners Morris and Bruner were spoken to regarding negligence. President Dockett did not return my phone call. 
Mayor Newsom was notified. Excuse me, sir, your time is up. Thank you. Are there any others? Hello, my name is Karma McGaw. I have been a resident of the second ward for about eight years. I moved to Bay City for multiple reasons. I love being close to the water. I loved the quaintness of the bridges. I believed in the downtown revival. I was inspired by the drive of the small business owners, and there was an up and coming music scene unlike anything in the surrounding areas. I was further inspired by the people of Bay City when I started attending Hope Vale Church and witnessed the work and dedication of those people that go into setting up and tearing down every Sunday at John Glenn High School. There is a strong beat and soul to the residents of this city, and I've watched people in powers of people in positions of power make decision after decision that show me you are completely out of touch with that beat and soul. Resources are being spent on painting murals while downtown buildings sit empty and slowly decay. Schools sit on overly patched and broken roads while children's fashion shows are being hosted downtown. Local investors trying to better the area are being forced to jump through hoops while social media personalities are being funded and exalted as they simply build a superficial fascade of what is actually happening. Bike lanes are being painted on roads, yet my neighbors are having to tag their unsafe sidewalks. We have highly paid officials, yet you're shutting down much needed firehouses and the community resources that come with an operable firehouse. From what I understand and have heard from past firefighters, this building has been in ill repair for the last 30 years, and that has been more than enough adequate time to have revamped this firehouse. Common sense tells me mold is not the whole story nor the actual reason. I'm familiar with mold remediation, and you can get those supplies from the local Home Depot. So what's the plan with the moldy building? Let it sit empty, molding, and do what with it? Questions were posed in the last meeting by the bank's residents that stood up here and so eloquently spoke of her community. She had named a few possible grants that were available. I watched the looks of apathy on your faces as she was talking. Were any of those options looked into before closing the firehouse? Or was the reason for the close, the slimmed down, not near, non-existent, and top-heavy fire staff you have here in Bay City? I live near a full-time firefighter who chooses to continue working in Detroit, where he says it's a better environment and they're able to do their job at a higher capacity. I understand the staffing issues when dealing with public service. You have to pay for downtime, that's just how it happens. When you cut or make public servants do two jobs, you decrease the level of training, you will end up increasing response times, and you wreck the heart and souls of the good ones that are stressed to the max with ever-looming trauma over their heads, compounded by the lack of resources to do their job that's been put on their hearts to do. If you want to keep and draw people to this town, you need to support your emergency services. Allow the police to do their jobs and allow firefighters to do their jobs. These are not interchangeable professions. Community safety cannot be a false sense of security or the job of a computer system. As a city, we are facing a homelessness crisis. This is not just a housing issue. Per the city's code enforcement, as of July 11th of this year, there were 13,200 residential properties in Bay City. 2,046 of those are rental properties, creating a total of 4,639 rental units. That's 35% of the city's housing units are rentals, 35%. Nor is this a policing issue. There is only so much legally that they can do, and wasting their already slimmed resources is not the solution. It's a mental health crisis. I was a registered nurse for 17 years, and the last 11 were spent in local emergency rooms. I can attest with firsthand experience that when somebody came into the ER in crisis, local placement was near impossible. I would love to see some nonprofit profits contributing beneficial services and awareness to the city, rather than supplying fluff and acting as special interest groups. Our marijuana revenue rival those of the city of Kalamazoo, the city of Grand Rapids, and Monroe Township. I brought the numbers and made copies so you can all look for yourselves. I'm curious as to how all those funds are being used. All I've seen are self-serving superficial policies with minimal regard for the majority of the residents of the city. There is ill-directed support to the things that may look pretty, but they are not actually helping any of the root issues that are preventing this area from becoming the strong and locally supported community that I know this city can be. The taxpayers of Bay City are not being properly represented and it's becoming apparent. I'd like to take a moment for answers, but I don't think that you can do that protocol states. You don't have to. But the beat and soul is getting louder, and you're going to need to start answering these questions. Thank you. This, I'm sorry. Please hold your applause. I know I understand. Ms. McGaw, 
Could you um, state your address and write it down as well, please? My address? Yeah, your name and address on the sheet. Oh, sure. Thank you. If you um, would stick around as well, I have answers for a couple of your questions. We can make those public. Yeah, but not during this part of the meeting. I don't have a venue. Thank you. Uh, Richard Luzak, 1707 Fremont. I'm here to address an issue that came up uh, 14 years ago before the commission, and that was the potential merger of the Bay City's uh, wastewater treatment system with the county's wastewater treatment system. At the time, I was in this uh, room with uh, when the superintendent at the time uh, addressed the commission, and as, as best as I can recall, he said, he said, uh, it's possible that we could do that. He says, but I've done a cost-benefit analysis, and he said, I don't think it's favorable for the city to do that. And so with keeping those particular points in mind, for the last couple of months, I've been researching this issue. Um, I, uh, I think it's very important to look at the economic issues involved in operation of the wastewater treatment plant. In, your, in, the, in the fiscal budget for last year, $6 million of ARPA funds, which could have been spent on infrastructure, such as Fire Station 5, instead were spent on replacing trickling filters at the uh, wastewater treatment plant. And in this year's budget, uh, their budget is, is considered an enterprise fund, uh, but still there's another $1.7 million being spent uh, on, uh, I think, something to do with the installation of the uh, trickling filters. <clears throat> now, I, I have not found any, I've been trying to answer the question, what is special about Bay City that we need to operate our own wastewater treatment plant which is just a mile and a half from the county's wastewater treatment plant. And um, I haven't been able to come up with any special reason. Uh, I did uh, put in a four-year request with the city, which was not very helpful, but I, I, I uh, sent a letter to uh, the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy, and I have the response here that says, we do not have uh, a PCB contamination issue. Uh, what has happened, that, that was the, uh, uh, the PCBs were an issue why we installed an activated charcoal uh, tertiary system in our wastewater treatment plant. But in the last several years, uh, the, uh, this gentleman uh, says we do not have uh, a PCB problem. Uh, furthermore, there was in another place from Eagle, there's a report that, uh, that says that in, when a study was done in 2019 that uh, the activated charcoal system, which was there to remove PCBs, it wasn't even working. It was spent, it was exhausted. In other words, it was worthless. And so, um, uh, my, these, these sorts of observations that I've come across have led me to wonder uh, what, what is the course that the city should take in the future. Uh, uh, to, uh, in limited time, all I can suggest to you is that um, I, look, I, look at, uh, I look at two wastewater treatment plants that have administrative staffs, they have two laboratories, two sets of laboratory technicians, two sets of mechanics, two sets of operators, uh, and I just see um, a, a, waste, a waste of resources. When, when Essexville and Hampton, 14 years ago, when Essexville and Hampton left our system, what happened in the next month is that the sewer rates in Bay City went up 33%. So for you commissioners who are concerned about tolls for low-income people on the uh, Liberty Bridge, I wonder what, how you would have reacted to that 33% increase in, uh, in sewer rates uh, back 14 years ago. So there's a plenty of economic issues to look at. When the, when the former superintendent stood here and said that it was not favorable for the city to do that, if, if you made a list of all the reasons of, of what he meant, he never explained that, the commission never asked him to explain, but somewhere in that list, you would find the fact 
that he did not want to recommend eliminating his own job. It was, in other words, it was, his recommendation was based on a conflict of interest. Uh, he was with benefits, he was making more than 100,000 a year. There were also other jobs at the wastewater treatment plant. So when he said it wasn't favorable for the city, he wasn't talking about low income people in the city, he was talking about himself and his fellow employees. So uh, my, my uh, analysis is this, that I think that the two wastewater systems should be merged. And if, if you wonder how you can do that, I'm thinking that wastewater could be transferred from one plant to another. They each have 18 million gallon uh, design capability. Uh, that's, that's their capacity per day of processing. And uh, we, could, we could reduce the elimination of staff. We could, we could trim it down to its appropriate size. Another, another uh, place where money is being spent is uh, in our NPDES uh, permit, the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System, uh, requires us to sample and analyze for PCBs on a monthly basis. As I said, we don't have PCBs, so that's another example of money I think that's being poorly spent when the NPDES permit should be Excuse applied. me, sir, your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any others? I, my name's Clyde Budd. I have a very short statement about Station 5. My son was in my living room. I moved back here five years ago. Four years ago, he dropped dead in my living room. It took over 10 minutes to get any help. I lost my favorite son. And I think it's a shame our fire stations only have one person in them. That's not right. People should be two people at a station because it's unfair to them. They're unsafe by themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Budd, could you state your name and address and write it too, please? Thank you. Hi, my name's Brenda. Hi. Yeah, we yeah, hold, hold on one second for the sign-in sheet. And if you, if you want to start and you can write it afterwards, that's fine. Thank you. My name's Brenda, and I'm homeless. I stay at the Liberty Bridge Encampment. I am not homeless by choice. Circumstances ended that way. For some reason, somebody called the police, and on the scanner on Facebook, it was posted that the city did not know there were that many homeless people. And I'm glad for that, because now since it's been acknowledged through Facebook and the scanner, after that night, an angel appeared, and her name is Tracy, and she's sitting right there. She is now giving us the resources we need, the information we need, and items that we need through donations through the city. I don't want anybody to be evicted. We're all cleaning up the area. We work as a community. We eat together. We fix food together. We watch out for each other. And I thank Tracy for everything she's done. And our community, because we're all picking up. Because she is giving us the resources that we need, like plastic bags for the garbage. Some of us want to work. But nobody will hire us because we either have medical reasons, we have criminal records. Now, with some of the homeless in Station 5, why can't we go in and clean up with some assistance from you guys, like give us a porta potty? That would be great. <laughs> but yeah, I appreciate Tracy and the community for helping. And she has gathered a bunch of citizens to walk around the town and give out toothpaste, toothbrushes, little food, you know, like snacks that we want, toilet paper, hand wipes, and everything like that. I want you guys to understand that we don't have a choice sometimes to why we're homeless. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Tracy Zane, 203 State Street. I just moved back home about eight months ago. What a shit show we're in. Congratulations, everybody. I'm here today, oh, sorry. I'm here today to express my concerns about the pro proposed vacancy, the law that's aimed at our homeless individuals. While I understand the need to maintain public safety and order, I'm deeply concerned about the potential inhumane consequences of this approach. For the past 12 days, I've been visiting the homeless encampment, interacting with this, these folks, getting a one-on-one -on -one with them, feeling their suffering and their pain. It's a simple solution. You said there wasn't one. It's about connecting with people, treating them like they're human. I think that we're all failing to do that here. Apparently this tent city, I haven't been home in 25 years, has been here for quite a long time. I'm very disappointed in all of you. I want to introduce you to somebody. This is my brother. The system failed him. He was released from prison, put in a halfway house here, and I had to retrieve him, deceased, decomposing in a bed for days. He was under state care. Unreal. Despite his struggles, though, <laughs> he lived every day to his fullest in this community, doing what he could. These folks surviving every day with people like me and other angels on the feet, just simply treating them like they're human. Y'all are missing the boat here. And if you don't connect with your community, the shit show is going to continue as it is. And as I'm hearing, all these folks disgruntled about the things that they're not receiving that they so much as deserve. We have a mental health crisis on our hands, and you folks need to learn to meet people where they're at. I don't care if they are in active addiction, they have a mental health crisis. Until this community understands that the main root of homelessness is mental health, y'all need to go back to school and get some help. Or get your staff trained in these streets to help these people. Now, I commend all the organizations here that ruthlessly tend to these people. And I looked at your budget for last year, and I may not have read through all of it, but I see a measly $36,000 allotted to Good Samaritan. Where is everybody else's money? How about us, those of us that are grassroots efforts that are out on the streets doing this at our own will. I've been in your community three years quietly in the South End in a private building that I rent for my personal use as an artist so that I can allow people to come in and have a free opportunity at their will to have something to do to just melt down to get away from their mental health. But y'all didn't see me. Sidewalk carnivals, book bags, clothing. You only notice what you want to see in this city. It's very evident, and I'm very disappointed. So I'm asking you to meet with me. Meet with these folks. Let's have a heart to heart and get back to what community needs. Because at this point, those of you making decisions, I'm pretty disappointed in. You all have a good night. Thank you. You, sir, you do have to it's speak okay. into the microphone, too. No, I just want to say something. I used to be like everyone in this room. I had my house. I had my cars. I lost my dad, my best friend. Then I lost my fiance, my family. I had nothing. That's what caused me homeless. I don't have a mental condition. I don't have nothing else. My city failed to offer me anything, and then I found, found new family at Tent City. That's all we are. Don't evict us. Help us. That's it. Thank you. Um, sir, I didn't catch your name, I apologize. <laughs> Mr. DeWitt, if, if you don't mind, can I just say something real quick? Go ahead. Thank you. I just want to clarify, there is no planned vagrancy law. I don't know what petition you're talking about. It's not ours. Okay. 
Ma'am, we'll, okay, we'll talk about this when we get to it on the agenda. So, okay, I understand what you're thinking of now, though. Thank you. No. Thank you. Mr. DeWitt. Alex, we're at 39 South Theory. Um, I'm going to start from one end and get back to what uh, most people are here for. First, I do want to congratulate uh, Wanigan and um, for the receipt of the state grant. Mike and his team are doing a great job to uh, help uh, increase draw to his part of town. And since he put the work into getting that grant, he's entitled to that grant that um, is on the agenda. Second, for the Lafayette Bridge meeting, I was disappointed that the meeting was changed to virtual only. And this project has been in limbo since they had the meeting in March, saying it would be starting in August. So I'm hoping that this is the last delay before this project gets started, because this needs to be, like, we've been putting a Band-Aid over a scar for too long. It just needs to be fixed. Um, items that were pulled that I didn't have to pull because someone did that for me. Um, the ECOP and app system, I know the pricing is low on those, but I did have somebody ask me, and it was a good question, why are we going all the way to Alabama for um, assistance on that? Are there no tech companies in the area that are competitive? The net dollars were low, so sealed bids may not have applied for that kind of job, but it seemed that we had to go all the way down south for that. It was kind of ridiculous. Um, my note on Station 5, I did not have a note until it was said that um, the closure was in the budget. In the May release of the budget packet, I just searched it when, when it was said, Station 5 isn't mentioned once in the 233 pages. Searching fire didn't bring anything uh, mentioning the location. Searching the word station brought up mostly substations from the electrical department. Just cleared up the packet did not mention Station 5 directly. On to the Bacchus Street project. Uh, this is a high dollar item. It's over one and a half million dollars to repair where it has actually zero residents right now. It's all industrial and all um, commercial. But I know the businesses there could use it. Northern Concrete needs another um, uh, egress out of their property for shipments. But I wish the owners of the press light um, building over the past 40 years would have done something with it, either demolish it or just sell it to somebody at, at a loss because they took a bad investment on that building and that would have helped improve the area and now what looks like a meaningless fix that needs to be done because the street is collapsing would not have had to happen in this way. Finally, on the um, item, the communication item um, submitted to the city, I do find it frustrating that we have to accept communications that are unsigned by people outside of Bay City. If you're serious about what you submit to the city review, have the dignity to at least put your name to it in, in pen. From the list, I could not find two of the people's names in Bay County's um, GIS system as, res as residents of Bay County. If you don't live here and you're trying to um, put pressure on public safety here, maybe you should reevaluate your priorities and focus on your townships, um, public safety. Back also, um, also listed as one person living in two separate townships, which I find just like glorious body double conspiracy level stuff right there. At issues, the fact that the items listed in the communication mostly um, came about as a way to go after minorities. For example, Chicago's 1992 loitering law was found unconstitutional by the U.S. Supreme Court in the case Chicago v. Morales and had to be rewritten to include actual criminal activity. As stated at the last meeting, just being homeless is not a criminal act. Vagrancy laws have also been a, have a checkered history in America. In the 1960s, at the height of the civil rights movement, vagrancy laws were challenged, specifically in Papa Cristo versus the city of Jacksonville, and now most laws about vagrancy only disallow aggressive panhandling, not existing in a manner unacceptable to a law a specific law enforcement officer. Aside from that, it was noted that, um, if the last, the last meeting as well, that if um, we just went in and chased out all the people out of the encampment, we would spend almost entirely all of our street hours for, for patrols getting those people back out because everyone would be calling about them. The community exists there, and at this point, there is no hard solution. So anyone who suggests just chasing them out is going to cause a bigger problem than what they think exists right now. Finally, I do want to note that it has been five years since the Bay County Housing Commission presented their three-story unit buildings and townhouse rows at the old Y property. There has been zero movement on that since then. I understand that is not this body that makes that final decision. But imagine an extra 100 supported and subsidized units in town. Homeless shelter apparently has everybody there with coupons for apartments, but there are no apartments available in Bay City. Imagine if we had almost 100 units four blocks down from there where they already um, walk around to their um, areas to just live. It would help relieve the situation. 
I would prefer um, units not be built in a locked community, but instead uh, spread out throughout the city like we did in the, or like they did in the 80s and 90s with the duplexes and ranches throughout town. But I understand that was not in that proposal. But imagine 100 more units to help support that um, section of our community. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jill Cosley from 208 West Smith Street, Banks area. I'm here tonight again to talk about the closing of Fire Station 5 on Smith Street without advance notice to the people of the area of which I'm a resident of. <clears throat> Most commissioners and even the mayor didn't know this was closing. Combined fire and safety has worked there for years. If just the building was the problem, it should have been addressed. You don't just close it because it's in disrepair. We should find the money to fix it. We should find the money to have the people there that are needed. One station on the whole west side is ridiculous, in my opinion, of where I live. And the people there are elderly. The people there need our help. Response times matter, and so do the residents of the Northwest Bay City. I spoke at the last commission meeting and nothing has been done other than a beautiful presentation of why it happened, which thank you to whoever did that. Um, so tonight I'm demanding a meeting with the city manager and the head of public safety. Within a reasonable amount of time, we need fire and EMT in our area because response time matters for the people on all sides of the river. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Larry Elliott, 308 Sanson Street. Uh, I saw the resolution or, and heard it. Uh, since my name was actually brought into it, uh, I figured I would speak. Also, I'm not happy with Station 5 closing. Uh, I don't know where the figure where it said, uh, Commissioner Elliott said 10 years ago, 5 million was allocated. 10 years ago, I don't remember if I said that, where I said it or the context of it. However, I'm in support of that resolution to keep Station 5 open. Response times, according to tonight's presentation, actually dropped. If you close Station 5 from Station 4, I don't believe that. Uh, it's too close of a time frame to find that. Uh, obviously, no trains came through there during that period of time. Independence Bridge wasn't closed. No, that, by the way, that does happen. Um, you know, trains go through there quite a bit. They are long trains. That Dow train comes through there. It can close Marquette, State, and sometimes Henry Street all at one time. If you don't live in that area, you probably don't know that. But again, we're not talking about closing stations in the other areas. If it's a question of the building is such in disrepair, are we closing station two? Because memory serves me correctly, that one's in bad, just as bad a shape. So what other stations are we closing then? We need our fire stations. We need our guys. We need them open to protect this community. Unfortunately, we're not Saginaw. We're not Midland. We don't have, they, they don't have a river running through there with four bridges that open up and close. We do. We have to remember that. We are unique in that area. I don't know why we keep forgetting it. Seems like every few years, Station 5 comes up to be closed. We seem to forget that. And we need to remember it. Thank you. Are there any others? Good 
Good evening. Uh, my name is Romito Velasquez, and uh, thank you for bringing up the issue of uh, being homeless. Um, I, I retired as a social worker. I was a client service specialist, and the issue is very, very, very complex, you know, dealing with uh, different... Um, there's a lot of, a lot of resources out there, plenty of resources out there, but there's plenty of obstacles that our homeless people need to go through. Um, I'm a little bit nervous, so I just, you know, uh, what's kind of sticking in my head is a remark made by, uh, I hate pointing fingers, uh, the shut up to, to, to one of the commissioners, that bothered me. Uh, I, I have had experiences like, like that, you know, somebody saying, hey, shut up, you know, why somebody else is talking and that kind of stuff. I find it very unrude for people that are in the professional uh, ranks to uh, address or, or make comments like that. Anyway, let me get back to the issue of uh, homelessness and that. Um, so my experiences uh, tell me that you know, I, I used to take homeless people or uh, mental health uh, persons every week to some of the shelters and that, and there are rules. The difficult part is you know, it, it, there's a mixture. It's very complex with uh, substance abuse, uh, lack of uh, money that clients don't have, uh, being homeless, uh, not taking their medications. There are different levels of uh, mental illness. And I've worked in the highest level of mental illness uh, before clients go to the psychiatric hospitals. Uh, I, I come from a family of 12. You know, we were poor when, when I was young. I struggled all the way through college. Um, part of it was because of alcoholism and, and substance abuse. I gave it up 20-something years ago. I've been clean and sober. Um, the issues go back. To, they're really simple. Is You know, our homeless people don't have, we, we, they, they, there's access to, uh, to all these beautiful organizations that give out food and that sort of stuff. The problem is, is the lack of transportation that uh, a lot of our uh, residents don't have. Um, I've seen a lot of residents <laughs> misuse money uh, that they get from their benefits and that kind of stuff. The mental illness part, you know, there, there's something up there that mentally ill people don't really get. And us that are well-educated and in positions of saying, well, we need to change our mindset. That's true. We do. We need to change our mindset, you know. A lot of our families don't understand, you know, let's kick Johnny aside because he's not going to change. You know, they've been through it. And somehow the perceptions that are instilled with our family members in the community um, stick, you know. It takes the individual a lot of willpower, a lot of prayers. For me, it did. A lot of willpower, a lot of strength to overcome my own issues of mental health. Recently, I was denied services I have kind of an anxiety disorder. I was denied services because they said he's being threatening. You know, so I reported it to my insurance company. I said, I'm not going to pay the copay. They're kicking me out. For what? Here, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to address an issue. I have a security guard reported me to the, uh, the therapist. Hey, this guy's being threatening. <laughs> I, that's totally false. You know, I... You know, it's their word against my word. Here, I'm, I'm the professional that is struggling with problems and that kind of stuff. You know, I mean, it's, it's almost like, I'm not sure how I'm feeling. You know, I'm kind of feeling uh, disappointed in the system. You know, it's who you know and what you know and, you know, that sort of stuff. You know, you pat my back, I'll pat your back. Um, recently, I, you know, I applied for a job at, at uh, one of the uh, homes, I've got a lot of experience. And the, the home was uh, 
not going to mention any names, but they give me the runaround. You know, I applied for the job. They were all happy with my resume. My resume is impeccable. They said, we'll get back to you after we hear from recipient rights because they needed to check my record. You know, I might have spilt milk on somebody and I might have been reported. You know, I ain't got no major violations. But this agency took me through the hoop to run around saying, well, we're still waiting for recipient rights to uh, notify us regarding your record. Excuse me, sir, your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Tara Pressler, 409 Patterson Avenue. Uh, this isn't going to come out eloquent. I'll give you that heads up. Um, lived there for 20 years, so we lived through the previous closure of Smith Street Station. Um, you know, it leaves you a little uneasy. I don't know how we can say that response times will be the same. I don't. That doesn't make sense to me. Maybe someone can explain it to me afterwards. I don't think that's possible. All the stations are a mile and a half further from my house at minimum. The two banger ones are two miles further. Um, I share the same concerns as a lot of people with the train tracks and the bridges, but I think something that we underestimate that is different from the last time is we do not know what the traffic is going to look like when Lafayette closes. We know it's not gonna be fun for anybody anywhere in the city, but we haven't experienced that yet. I don't know that we anticipated exactly how it would all go down. You know, you don't know how many people are going to boycott. We didn't know how many were gonna boycott Liberty and how much that was gonna to push to vets. Well, very soon we're gonna have no Lafayette and we're gonna have independence as a toll too. And I'm sure a volume of people are going to be avoiding that. I realize first responders from the east side can come over those bridges. Um, personally, my, I grew up on State Street. Um, mutual aid's fond to me because Bangor saved my parents' house. Um, I was stuck on the Liberty Bridge coming over when we watched the first black smoke come up, I was coming from the east to the west and watched that smoke come up and sat there, started getting the phone calls that our house was um, starting to have fire on it. Banger was able to save it. Um, and that was with Smith open. They needed Banger's help. So I have a little bit of concern that we don't always think about our responsibility to the people that we share mutual aid with how does Bangor feel about our station home being even further from them now when they need us, but we are potentially relying on them more? And I think we should bear some responsibility of that or else we might start being in a situation where they're not coming for us, um, potentially. Um, also, I do, I, I, I agree with the, the issue that one, Firefighter, that's a very unfortunate situation to be in. I understand budgets and whatnot, but um, one firefighter arriving three, four minutes earlier from station five can be doing a lot of things, preparing for their second guy to get there, man or woman to get there. Um, you know, there we had to be stopped from me running into my parents' house to get our dog. That guy can be saving someone from going in. That guy can be verifying that everybody's out, can be talking to neighbors, making sure who lives there. Are they there? What, what do they drive? They can be doing a lot of things. They can be locating that hydrant. Um, I, I, it was a surprise to me. I was out of town when I found out it was closing again. Huge disappointment. Um, I think it should be reconsidered and have some other angles looked at. It's also very disappointing that the roof has gotten to the point where it's compounded. You know, I'm a homeowner, if I let my roof go, 
it's gonna cause more issues, it's gonna be more money. So why aren't we dealing with those? And what are we doing at the other stations to prevent that from happening at those? Routine maintenance, checks, whatever needs to be done so that we're not ending up in these situations where it's compounded to be even more expensive than it would have been just to fix it in the first place. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any others? Seeing none, we will move on to public hearings. I believe we have a public hearing tonight. One second. We do. This is the opportunity for citizens to address the commission regarding public hearing number one. Public hearing order, I'm sorry, public hearing number one is Ordinance Amendment Chapter 26, Buildings and Building Regulations, Sections 26 266 through section 26-320 regarding International Property Maintenance Code 2021. Under the rules of the City Commission, each speaker will be allowed five minutes to speak and Commissioner Clements will serve as the timekeeper. Is there a motion to allow for public hearing number one? Thank you, Commissioner Clements. A uh, motion for public hearing number one. Thank you, is there a second? Commissioner Hilliker? Second. Thank you. If anyone wishes to address the commission regarding public hearing item number one, please come forward, sign the registration sheet, and state your name and address for the record. Seeing none, we will move on to special orders. Will the clerk please read the next item on the agenda? Special order number one, city manager recommending ordinance amendment to the code of ordinances, chapter 26, buildings and building regulations, sections 26266 through 26320 regarding the internal property maintenance code 2021, recommendation approve. Thank you, is there a motion? Commissioner Brunner. Move to approve. Thank you, is there a second? Commissioner Clements. Second. Thank you, is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on special order number one. Commissioner Bernie. Yes. Brunner? Yes. Hilliker? Yes. Gerard? Yes. Clements? Yes. Morris? Yes. Dockett? Yes. Rivet? Yes. Yes. All right, next order of business is regular agenda. Will the clerk please Read the next item um, of business. Reports of officers number seven, city manager recommending budget amendments in the amount of 190,000 for the fiscal year 2024-25 budget. Recommendation approved. Thank you, is there a motion? Commissioner Brenner? Move to approve. Thank you, is there a second? Commissioner Hilliker? Second. Thank you, is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on reports of Officer 7, right? Sorry. Yeah. Wait the, oh, Commissioner. Yes, Green. yes. Um, that's number 7, isn't it? Um, okay. The $190,000 for the fiscal year. I just wanted um, some clarification on that. What? Uh, recommending the amendments. What's the amendment for? I just wanted a clarification on it. Um, as it's stated in your cover rack that was submitted, it is, one is for the local site remediation revolving fund, and that's for the Marquette District for the industrial park, and that is replacing signs. And the other one is public improvement fund, and that one is to modify a parking island at Vets Park. And another one is for a plotter scanner for the DPW building. And that's for the amendment for the hundred and ninety thousand dollars. That the hundred and ninety is the total, I believe. I have to look and see. Okay. Hundred and ninety is total of those three. All right. Can we get that item itemized instead of just you it's, just writing a hundred and ninety thousand dollars? I didn't. We? It's in your packet. Um, I don't see, it doesn't say that. It just says budget amendments in the amount of $190,000 for the fiscal year. I don't see, like, it, I don't see it written here itemized. It is. It's in your cover rack and the attachments. You have all the budget amendments attached. 
So if I may, Commissioner Bernie, you're looking at the agenda. Now. Okay, it's online. Yep. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Commissioner Clements, did you have your hand up? I did, but it was just to clarify the numbers in the agenda. Gotcha. All good. Anybody else? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on reports of officers seven? Commissioner Brunner? Yes. Hilliker? Yes. Gerard? Yes. Clements? Yes. Morris? Yes. Dockett? Yes. Rivet? No. Bernie? No. Six yes to no. Motion is adopted. Will the clerk please call the next item of business? Reports of officers number eight, city manager recommending change order number one to the contract with Sinclair Recreation Hall in Michigan in the increased amount of $20,856 for the Maplewood Park Playground Project recommendation approved. Thank you. Is there a motion? Commissioner Brunner? Move to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Commissioner Hilliker? Second. Thank you. Is there a discussion? Commissioner Bernie? Yes. Um, I keep seeing the last time I saw the, um, it's, oh, let me read it so I can, it, 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 well, it includes, it says city manager recommending change order number one to the contract with Sinclair Recreation, um, Howland, Michigan, in the increased amount of the $20,856 for Maplewood Park Playground Project. Um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the last time Mr., um, Mer, uh, Marsac or whatever his name is that does our budget. He just gave uh, 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 Maplewood Park, we were just arguing over the $900,000 for Maplewood Park. We just put that in the budget. And I was just arguing over it with Mr. Gerard about saying that would we rather have swings or the streets done. And here I am seeing another twenty thousand eight hundred and fifty-six dollars. Could you please clarify that to me? Why are we? What? Why do we keep giving Maplewood Park? Why are we still um, giving Maplewood Park um, funding? Why are we? Yeah. I just want some clarification on that. Why we just gave them eight hundred thousand dollars? So this is for the actual contracts to do the work. So you approve the budget with the amount, but the contracts come back to commission to be approved. Okay, but we approved it, mm -hmm. and then now you're asking for us to approve more. Okay. Of you're asking, we've already, um, we talked about it. You said the money was being re released. I talked to um, President Dockett mm -hmm. and asked him about, you know, Mr. Marciniak or Mar Martini. Yes. Martini. And he even said that that $900,000 was spent for the park. And I argued again and said that that money could be used for the streets instead of swing sets for the children. Now I'm seeing another, again, $20,856 for Maplewood Park Playground Project. I'm just asking, I never see Bernie Park, I never see Carroll Park, I never see any other park. It's always Maplewood Park. So I'm just asking for clarification, why is it only one park instead of parks throughout the city? Commissioner Bernie, you do have to let her answer. Thank yes. you. Yes, um, so we do do other parks, but this project was put into the budget to work on this year and it's CDBG money. And with this increase that you're seeing on the agenda, the cover rec explains that we're actually decreasing another contract that's on tonight for Shaw Contracting with that same amount because we're taking that service and putting it into this contract. So we're actually reducing the Shaw one by 29,000, increasing this by 20, so we're saving $9,000. Okay, I'm gonna, when we go down further, I'm gonna check you on the $730,000 that we're gonna use on it again. Okay on the same page, yeah. but anyways, when we go to the CDBG funding, I've been dealing with that for 20 years. So the CDBG funding money is for low-income community development. Well, Maplewood Park is nowhere near low-income to moderate-income neighborhoods. So we know, if you're saying that, we know that something's not right with using that money for there. 
So what I'm asking for clarification, I know you're not using that money, the CDBG funding, for a neighborhood or a Maplewood Park, which is not a lower to moderate income neighborhood. So um, I need clarification. Where's that money coming from? Where are you spending it from? Which was $900,000 a month ago. Now another 20. And then we're going to get down to number 12. We'll talk about that in a minute. Commissioner, Where's that money coming from? If, if I may explain this. So we have a budgeting process where we say where we're going to spend the money. And then we put it out for contracts. And then we get a contract. So there's, a, there's an approval for the budget. There's an approval for the contract. Then the contract comes back, we approve the dollar amounts, and then change orders happen. So this is a change order where they took money from one project, moved it to a different project, moved money from that project to a different project. It's an accounting thing. We actually saved $9,000. Following up on that, Maplewood Park is directly adjacent to one of the largest Section 8 housing developments within the city of Bay City. It is most definitely low to moderate income. So I just want to <laughs> clarify that. That's in my ward. Um, and it is, it is definitely an area that is in need of some attention and some love, and it is getting that love and attention, but this is money that we already allocated. We're just going through the formality of approving the contract. Okay. Now, all together in the past two years, we spent about $2 million on Maplewood Park because it's 800000 here, 900000 here. Okay, if, we're, if we getting all this money and we can't pay for these damn bridges, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, this money is constantly being spent on this Maplewood Park. And, you know, I'm not trying to, uh, 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 you know, talk uh, down to you or anything, but I'm really getting tired of this twisty thing. One minute you tell the community this, and the next minute you try to twist it around, it's plain as day right here. Okay. It is plain as day. And I'm just having, asking her for clarification. Why is it that every time I ask about money, it's being budgeted? It's being budgeted. It's being, but no, it has already been budgeted, and there's more money coming out. And I'm asking where, why does this park keep getting used as a scapegoat? That I'm just bringing it like that. So I'm asking for clarification. And that's it. You've received no more, no less. I'm, uh, uh, I am the chair. You. You're out of order. I'm talking to her. Senator Bernie, you've received the answer to your question multiple times. We can't answer it any differently because that's the answer. So if you have a different question, we're happy to entertain it. But we can't answer it any differently. That's, we've, we've explained it. I'll wait until 12, uh, number 12 because it's, it's even more money for Maplewood Park. Okay. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Commissioner uh, Hilliker. So this is my attempt to try to, to help you with your question. Um, and it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to help visualize it for you. So for, okay, then I'm gonna do it for the audience. So. You visualize it when you sitting in court for perjury. Bernie, Commissioner Bernie, you don't have the floor. Thank you. Okay, so picture, <laughs> this is for everyone out there then. So what it is, is during the budget session, picture we have these buckets, or your wallet, if whatever it might be, right? Picture you have that. What we're voting on right now is, say you wanted to, I don't know, say it's candy apples, and you decided that you have budgeted $5 for candy apples. Well, here's a candy apple vendor. I'm going to pay a dollar for the candy apple vendor. I'm not adding the amount of money in my wallet, I am just taking my money in my wallet that's right there for the candy apples and buying a candy apple. That's what we're approving right now is the actual person we're buying the candy apple from. Does that help? Okay, thank you. Commissioner Clements. Yes, thank you. Um, you know, I, I, overall, this is, I think it's a great project, you know, being, you know, in the edge, education field and you know have read multiple studies where children that have access to playgrounds um, there's going to be a soccer pitch I believe a, a mini soccer pitch basketball courts there's going to be a lot of stuff here and 
you know, whenever children have access to these things, you know, all the studies have shown that they do better in school. They, you know, it helps with mental health, all these things. So this is a, a great project um, to spend CDBG funds on. It's much needed in this area of town. Um, so I, I support this uh, enthusiastically. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Brenner. Yes, I'm going to mirror uh, Commissioner Clements' comments uh, just now. I ride by Maplewood Park on my way to work, and they are doing—they're doing a great job. Things are looking really nice over there, and the kids are going to love this wholeheartedly. Uh, that being said, um, I'm going to call the question. Technically, you can't call the question after you spoke on it, Commissioner Bernie. Okay, um, they have worked on this Maplewood Park several times over the past year. Let me tell you one thing, and every last one of you, Bernie Park is right across the street from a homeless shelter. Now you tell me what mental health would help for those children for a park. You wanna talk about low income CDBG money funding? You think about Bernie Park. Those are homeless children that probably ain't even seen a swing before. So you go and spend $2 million over there on Maplewood Park and you keep on spending it over there and it's good for their mental health. You think about kids that ain't never seen a park before in their life. So don't tell me about it's good for their mental health. If you worrying about their mental health, worry about them sleeping in a bed at night and even swinging on a swing. I don't want to hear it. I'm tired of you guys taking $2 million at a, at a time and spending it on a park instead of spending it on the streets. Blacktop the streets. Yeah, blacktop the streets. All set, Commissioner Bernie? Thank you. Yes, I am. Commissioner Clements. I'll call the question. Thank you. With the clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Hilliker. Yes. Gerard. Yes. Clements? Yes. Morris? Yes. Dockett? Yes. Rivet? Yes. Bernie? No. Brunner? Yes. Seven yes. The clerk, please call the next item on the agenda. Ports Officers 9, City Manager recommending contract with Core Technology, Norcross, Georgia, for ECOP Citizen Incident Reporting System for the Department of Public Safety for fiscal year 25 in the amount of $5,000. Recommendation approved. Thank you. Is there a motion? Commissioner Brunner? Move to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Commissioner Clements? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Commissioner Gerard? Yes, thank you. Uh, we had a speaker earlier that made a comment about why he wasn't a local vendor maybe given an option. Could that be talked about? Or is this very specific to the program that we have? Just I believe he was talking about the other item on the agenda, but um, the police app, or public safety app, but this particular one, the core, is who we have our reporting system through now. Um, it's just adding another feature to it. Okay, thank you. Did you want to get the answer to the other question? Or, I mean, while you're, <laughs> while you're up there, rather than waste time, I mean, is there, so. Uh, yeah. It's a, a well-known, uh, I guess, app creator that has done it for many departments throughout the state and country. Um, I don't know of any local places that have done similar work. Um, this is the only one I know of that has done this type of thing for public safety departments specifically. Did we put a request for proposal out, or is it under a threshold? Under the threshold, it's under a threshold. Under that, a threshold. that number is for a five-year contract, so it's relatively because it's a five-year. It's okay. Right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any others? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on reports of officers nine? Commissioner Gerard. Yes. Clements. Yes. Morris. Yes. Docket. Yes. Rivet. Yes. I'm sorry? Yes. Thank you. Bernie? Yes. Brunner? Yes. Hilliker? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Clerk, please call the next item on the agenda. 
The Ports of Officers 10, City Manager recommending five-year agreement with OCV LLC, Opelika, Alabama, for the creation and maintenance of a mobile app for the Department of Public Safety in the amount of $28,500. Recommendation approved. Thank you. Is there a motion? Commissioner Brenner. Move to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Commissioner Hilliker. Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I just want to say in my day-to-day -day life, I'm a software engineer. Um, I could not build this for that cost. A lot of times with software like this, um, you have an app that's boilerplate, and you take it and you rebrand it, and you give it to another department. That's probably what's going on here, how they got it so cheap. Um, there's a saying in software that there is $50 software and $50,000 software, so that's, this is a pretty good deal on this. Thank you. Will clerk please call the roll? Mr. Clements? Yes. Morris? Yes. Dockett? Yes. Rivet? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Brunner? Yes. Hilliker? Yes. Gerard? Yes. Yes. Motion's adopted. Will clerk please call the next item on the agenda? Ports Officers Number 11, City Manager recommending contract with Shaw Contracting Company, Bay City, for reconstruction of Morton Street and concrete patching on Bacchus Street in the amount of $1,588,792.45. Recommendation approved. Thank you. Is there a motion? Commissioner Brenner? Move to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Commissioner Morris? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Commissioner Bernie? Um, do you want me to read it? Or you already know about it? Okay. This is, this is discussion on well, yes, a, officers. Yes, a discussion. Um, it says recommending contract with Shaw Contracting Company. Um, it says a reconstruction of Morton Street and concrete patching on Bacchus Street in the amount of $1,500,088. Um, when it says reconstruction of Morton Street and then concrete patching, are you... Are we, um, city manager, are you, um, are we going to put uh, cement on Morton Street and then are we going to patch back a street or are we going to do the whole street cement or blacktop? So in the cover wreck it explains that Morton Street will be done with um, asphalt, which is going to be rated for heavy truck traffic. And then for Bacchus Street, um, let's see here. Okay, so it's already a current concrete roadway with curb and gutter, so it's going to stay that way just with patching. Okay, now uh, at one point we said that uh, we had approved for, uh, we had funding for the streets, some of the streets to be fixed here in the city. Um, uh, I did see uh, some blacktop, but I saw it like in the front of, on Jefferson, in the front of this area. I'm wondering, can we, because we have money. You said that, well, we all voted the money in to have money to do some of the streets. I'm wondering, are we going to get those done this year? Because we did budget the money in, and will it be blacktop? Are we going to, that's what I'm saying, are we going to use blacktop? Or are they doing the patching like we're going to do here with, um, right, you know, the patching with Bacchus and, you know, this right here? Are we doing, is this what we're doing, or are we doing blacktop right here? On this specific, this, it's, it's asphalt. So it's asphalt, and the other one is, yeah, it's two streets, and one is concrete. So we're leaving that as is. It's costing $1 million? Yep, yes, road projects are just one, expensive. One, is it a street or a road? It's two streets. Just two streets? Mm -hmm. For one point, for $1.5 million? Yes. And it's two streets? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. To be clear, they are long streets. That's, that's part of it, is the length of them. This is where Prestolite is in the, in the um, south side of the west side. That's that long stretch. Um, Commissioner Clements. Yes, thank you. And when it says reconstruction, that's infrastructure underneath, and, and it's not just repaving a street. That's what adds the, to the costs, correct? correct? Yeah, because we're doing new curb, new gutter, storm sewer. Right. There's more to it than just yep. putting down the uh, asphalt. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? 
So I do have a question. Uh, one of the speakers did bring up that this is not a residential area. Obviously, we want to prioritize residential areas. Can we talk about the grand strategy reason why we're doing this uh, industrial area instead of a residential neighborhood? So this was part, and I'm looking at Rachel just to refresh my mind. This was part of the ARPA fund projects that we brought forward last year um, to be approved by commission. But yeah, you can explain why that was on the list. When we had the $6 million, um, I was asked for a list for $6 million for projects for ARPA a few years ago, um, we split that up. We did some lighter fixes, some heavy duty things. Um, Morton's been on a list for a long time as a reconstruction. We already had that project scoped out, so it was an easy one to pull forward in a short amount of time. And you know, we did get some local streets in there. We got major streets, we've got residential, we've got business. So it was just a variety of things. Okay, are there, I guess why was Back is specifically included in the plan prior to ARPA. So I know we moved it up, but was there something wrong with the utilities underneath? Um, is this part of redevelopment ready? Is there some strategy reason to it? Both of these were, were um, in the same area, and to make the loop come around, we just combined the both of them. Bacchus doesn't need a full reconstruction. There's just bad sections of concrete, so we're just going to be taking those out and replacing it with new concrete. I'm, I'm sorry, I flipped them, Morton. Any power, oh. any utility issues under Morton? We don't have utility issues. The problem with Morton is that the pavement is so bad that it's going to keep getting worse because it's so potted up. It's also the, the sub base is failing, and without having curb and gutter and proper ditches, it floods everything. Um, all the time through there. We get a lot of sugar beet traffic. We get a lot of heavy concrete for northern. Um, so it really, um, the only way to fix that is a major reconstruction project. Yeah. Are we, um, and I guess this isn't, this is not a question for you, Ms. Phillips, but are we working on attracting uh, new industrial customers to that area or new industrial facilities to that area um, to use those new streets? To you. Thank you. Um, I, I mean, I would need to check with economic development and probably Bay Future as well, because okay. that would be something they would work on. Because I know that's, that's an industrial area. It's one of the few areas where there isn't uh, fully developed already. We're not fully mature there. So there is room for improvement, room for new businesses to go. And that is something that we need, right? We do need to attract those kinds of businesses. So I, I understand and I support this. But um, if I may on that, we have had at least three new businesses come in that area just in the past few years. That is wonderful to hear. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Morris. Yes. Dockett? Yes. Rivet? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Runner? Yes. Hilliker? No. Gerard? Yes. Clements? Yes. Seven yes, one no. Motion's adopted, approved. Uh, would the clerk please call the next item on the agenda. Reports of Officers 12, City Manager recommending contract with Shaw Contracting, Bay City for Maplewood Park improvements in the amount of $730,075. Recommendation approved. Thank you. Is there a motion? Commissioner Clements? Move to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Commissioner Brunner? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Commissioner Bernie? Okay. Now, I'm going to say it again. City Manager recommending contract with Shaw Contracting Company, Bay City, for Maplewood Improvements, $730,000 and 75 cents, 75 hours. Now listen, if you were, your study asking for money for Maplewood Park, it's on line seven, I mean line eight, then you go down, it's on line 12. It's like, why don't you just ask for the money? Why are you parting it out? Like, I'm not going to find out. You're taking the money again for Maple Wood Park. I want clarification. Why is this park being the dump place to get the money? So It's like we're not going to, you know, the, the public 
is not going to see this. If I wasn't sitting here ratting on you, they would never see this. You guys would never see any of this if I wasn't opening my mouth. People, if you see me, this is what you have been doing, sleeping. Clarification, why do you keep spending money on Maplewood Park? Because every time I turn around, it's on here for thousands and thousands of dollars. Why do you keep doing that? So once again, the commission approved the budget for Maplewood Park in the 900,000, can I finish please? So it was 900,000, we are awarding it to contractors now. So you approve a budget and then you have to approve the contracts for that amount. And so we're giving it to two different vendors on this agenda for two different things in the park. They have specific things that the contract is for. So you're saying $900,000 today now? Or are you saying nine hundred thousand dollars from the past? I don't know what you're talking about. From well, you the just past. said nine hundred thousand dollars, didn't you? I don't know what you're talking about from the past. But you said nine hundred thousand dollars just now, right? From the budget, that the budget that was approved. Okay. Well, I'm talking about seven hundred thousand and thirty right here. That is for the contract. Okay. It's not in addition to the budget. It's, uh, it's using the money from the budget. Okay. We'll just, we'll, we'll just deal with that. But, um, yeah, if, if, if I wasn't telling everything, this is what goes through this chambers. I want you, when, when you, I've noticed on everything that you approve, you say the commission as a whole, I want my name off of everything that says commission as a whole because I did not, I didn't approve it. I didn't put my name on it. I didn't sign it. So anything that you pass and you put commission as a whole, I didn't do it. And I mean it. Thank you. Okay, um, Commissioner Brunner. Call the question. Thank you. Is there... <laughs> Um, will the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Dockett? Yes. Rivet? Yes. Bernie? No. Brunner? Yes. Hilliker? Yes. Gerard? Yes. Clements? Yes. Morris? Yes. Seven yes. The motion is adopted. Will the clerk please call the next item on the agenda? Communication 15, petition regarding quality of life policing, recommendation receive. Thank you. Is there a motion? So if we don't have a motion, we can't discuss it, and I would like to discuss it. <laughs> if we can discuss it. We do have to have a motion to discuss it. Commissioner Gerard. Move to receive. Thank you. Commissioner Clements. Well, I was going to ask to suspend the rules to discuss it. Okay, so there is, let's say the most recent motion is a motion to suspend. Is there any objection to suspending the rules? Seeing none, the rules are suspended. Okay, Commissioner Clements. Yes, um, as I asked for in the commissioner comments that this is quote unquote called a petition because it's called a petition, we legally had to put it on the agenda. Um, the city has nothing to do with this. It was not written by anybody from the city. It's, as far as I know, it's not supported by anyone from the city. Um, I didn't really know that it was a big to-do until I got here, and I guess something went around on Facebook about this is what the city's going to do to homeless, which is completely not true. Um, once again, I still, you know, social media, I think, is... <laughs> A major detriment to our society um, so you know my take on this is it's just a bunch of nonsense I hope that if we do don't receive it it just goes away it's not something that I support and I'm pretty confident it's not something that anybody sitting here supports either thank you thank you is there anyone else Commissioner Gerard yeah I just want to echo the sentiment I, I think there's a misconception that there's nobody from this body or from the city of Bay City 
city official that put this forward. There's a group of people that that submitted this, and nothing that the anybody from here or the city itself submitted. So uh, yeah, I don't support. I mean, I only put it forward to have a discussion, but I, I I'd rather just let it die. Thank you, Commissioner Hilliker. Yeah, this is a very easy no for me. Um, and then it even before everyone spoke, it was already an easy no for me. So. Thank you, Commissioner Bernie. This is not an easy no to want to help people. Um, I think the commission, I think we should talk about, uh, maybe have a closed door about what we can do to help the community. We are here, the commissioners are here for health and public safety. And I think we, I know, I don't think, we need to get together and figure out what we can do to help our city to grow. Um, that is not growing. And we work for the people. They hired us. I don't know where y'all get off and thinking that you, we hired them. We hi They hired us. We work for the people. So that means we get together and we try to make a solution. We figure it out. What can we do to help the people? And so um, with that being said, we need to pull, um, make a meeting, uh, write a uh, resolution, um, just get together as a body, as a whole. And um, whether you pass it or not, I'm writing a resolution for us, uh, or I hope we can get together on this and say, okay, this is what we need to do to alleviate homelessness. Uh, 63 or whatever, $33,000, $63,000 that you gave to the shelter is not going to do it. But 2019 through, I think it was 2017 through 2019, those Labadee O's lofts, as I recall, the CDBG money had given them $2 million. Now I will look it up and bring it to the floor and let everybody see it because I was fighting over that. Them lofts, that building could be used to house homeless people. So we can look into that, because I can sure bring it to the floor. So we'll have to think about that. That Labity Lofts place, whatever happened to that? Don't you think we could, do you think we can, President um, Dockett, do you think we can look into that? So I have really fantastic news for you. Um, we already have a presentation scheduled where we're gonna discuss it like you're asking for. Already done. Second thing, Labity Lofts is a facility to house homeless people. So it's, it's already there, it's already up, it's already running, it's funded, already done. Ready to um, President Dockett, it's not up and running. I've been inside. They, they have the children's place, it's right next door. There, but there it's going to be up it. and running. Promise you, there are people living in. No, but they have the children place, so they couldn't open that yet because it's not done. I've been inside and all that. It's not done yet. They started on it, but they had to stop. So what we need to do, which it would be a great place, that would be a nice place. And somebody, I think you said we have halfway houses. No, we don't. We don't have halfway houses in Bay City. No, we don't. Yes, we do. Well, I don't know where they are because these people wouldn't be living up underneath a bridge. Commissioner Hilliker's father-in-law lives across the street from one. Okay, well, they're not going to house 20 people. <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, Commissioner Brunner. Yes, thank you very much. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank all the folks that came out tonight to speak on behalf of the situation that we do have with homelessness. I do apologize that social media had given the wrong impression of what this was. I don't know anybody that would really support what, we, what was brought before us tonight. So this will be definitely a no on my part. And I do look forward to the presentation, hope we can do whatever we can do to try and bring some help to these people. Thank you, anyone else? Okay, um, real quick, I just wanna reiterate what's been said several times. Um, I am of the mindset that we should have compassion and help people out of homelessness. That is, this is not um, something that I agree with this letter. I do wanna clarify because there was questions about Ms. Muscott receiving it. 
The receive stamp is basically that it came in the mail, she stamped it and put it in a file cabinet. It's, it's a record keeping thing. So it's not, a, it's not a she approved it or anything like that. The received on our behalf that was recommended here or is recommended here is the same thing. It's kind of the equivalent of getting a letter in the mail, taking it, putting it in your file cabinet, and that's it. So this was never an approval, there was never an ordinance, there was never a resolution, there was never anything to criminalize homelessness or anything associated with homelessness um, within the city of Bay City. So I just wanna make sure that that's clear. Social media does run away from us regularly. Um, the social media machine is, is wild. So I wanna really reiterate that so everybody understands. Um, I don't know what the others are going to do, but from here, we need a motion to not, or to um, unsuspend the rules, and then if there is a motion, somebody would make the motion a second, and then we vote, or nobody makes a motion and it just dies. Those are everybody's options, just to be clear. Commissioner Clements? Motion to go back into regular business, regular order. Thank you. Is there any objection? Seeing none, we're back in the regular order of business. The last thing on the table was Commissioner Gerard's um, move to receive. I'm gonna withdraw that motion. Withdrawing. Does anyone want to make a motion? Seeing none, nothing happens. Okay, it's not even failed, it just nothing happens. So this um, metaphorically goes in the trash can. It's probably the best way to describe it. Um, will the clerk please call the next item on the agenda? Uh, resolution 17, Commission as a whole resolution accepting the Michigan Economic Development Corporation match on Maine Grant Agreement 414978 in the amount of $25,000. Recommendation approve. Thank you. Is there a motion? Commissioner. Move to approve. Thank you. Second. Commissioner Clements. Second. Thank you. Um, any discussion? Commissioner Gerard. Yes, this grant was received by the Wanigan uh, uh, Eatery and Pub, is that correct? So um, they're gonna be able to use this during that time that the uh, Lafayette Bridge is down to attract uh, new business in the area. Um, actually in Putts Park, there was installation of some recreational equipment recently. And um, so to get more people in the area, those businesses are gonna need all the support they can get during that uh, potential 30 month uh, downtime in, in that area. So uh, anything we can do to help business in that area, I highly support and encourage. So um, this is nothing the city is issuing, this is done through the state is receiving uh, on behalf of that eatery. So thank you, I hope you all support. Thank you. Anyone else seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Rivet. Yes. Bernie? No. Runner? Yes. Hilliker? Yes. yes. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Gerard? <laughs> yes. Sorry. Clements? Yes. Morris? Yes. Docket? Yes. <laughs> Stephanie? It's hard because Commissioner Brunner goes and then you go and I want to go in line sometimes. I apologize. Um, Will the clerk please call the, the, I believe, last item on tonight's agenda? We have two. Okay. Three. Oh, we do have regular on here. Regular agenda number one. Jay Sanborn requesting approval of addendum to the Midland Street feed on the street permit at enclosure of Lynn Street, one block north and south of Midland Street from August 22nd to August 24th. Motion. Commissioner Brunner. Move to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Commissioner Gerard. Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Commissioner Clements. Yes, thank you. Um, you know, I was waiting to hear from uh, some of the Midland Street business owners regarding this, and I, I didn't hear from, from anybody. And, you know, everybody's been talking, working together, communicating down there this, this summer, so it's been great. But upon looking at this, I noticed that they want to close both the north and south side of Lynn Street from Midland. So if you close the 600 block, and then you close North Lynn on both sides of Midland Street, you literally block the um, 700 block. There's no way, there's only one way to get to the donut shop, Wholesale Electric, the hardware, 
you know, you really have to leave one side of Lynn Street open. So I'm going to vote no on this um, just because of that. I mean, I, I wish I would have heard from somebody uh, prior to the meeting. So that's my take on it is it's with both sides of Lynn Street closing, it's not a good idea. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Okay. I agree with um, Commissioner Clements on this. I looked at the map and I have been a vocal supporter of street closures um, this entire time for the last four years. But I was looking at this and this does block a lot of businesses' parking lots. It makes them inaccessible. Um, that's problematic. I talked to the manager about can we do half, half street closures. Uh, there's safety concerns about doing that. I, I just don't think this is the right closure. I would be open to a modified closure from this if they want to bring that forward um, at the next meeting. I'd be happy to entertain it, but the way this is, it, it closes too many streets and it makes it so that there's a lot of landlocked places that just there's no access at all. Uh, makes it really difficult for people. So I will also be voting no on this. Anyone else? Commissioner Morris? Just a question. Instead of voting no, would it be possible to refer back to staff or refer back to them so they can change, possibly change it? Or do we just have to just vote strictly no on this? It's six of one, half a dozen of the other. We can. They can just submit a new one. Or, or we can refer back to staff and modify the original one, but it ends up the same thing. Either way is fine, it's as long as they have the opportunity to resend something, we did vote no. I know a lot of times when we vote something no, it can't come back. Whether it's a variation or not, I just wasn't sure, and that's why I'm asking. Yep, they would, they would just come with a, with a changed um, request. Oh, okay, the dates are problematic here though. We don't have a meeting. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, so we would have to, we have a couple options at this point. We can do a ratification, we can modify it on the floor, we can reject it, or we can approve it. So if we choose to do ratification, we can give direction on what we want and then have them change it, submit it, and then approve it after the fact. So it's putting that in staff's hands for that duration. Uh, we can modify what there is here where we say we want this closed, not this one or this one, but not this one or we can approve or we can reject uh, because of the timeline. This, this does happen before our next meeting, unfortunately. I would prefer us to modify, but if uh, Madrid Commission is on board with us modifying it, even though it's not us bringing this in, um, it, it is what it is and we just vote regularly how we would if no one's on board with modifying it ourselves. Does anyone want to make a modification? Commissioner Gerard? Was there any questions? Uh, did staff have a conversation with Mr. Sanborn before he applied for this and were there communications or what was communications regarding this? So I'm looking at Jamie to see, I mean, he, there's a couple things going on here though because we have this one and we have the one after that also closes the 500 block. So, Essentially, it would be the 500, the 600, and the 700 in North and South Lynn, which would make traffic impossible to get around down there and the businesses. So we kind of have to look at the whole picture, I think, with the two that are on here, the two requests. Um, haven't gotten anything, no conversation from Jane Okay, there was no, okay, okay, thank you. So I, my personal thoughts on it, one thing that we've done in the past is uh, Lynn Street north of Midland Street and then the 600 block and then the 500 block as well because that's where Mr. Navalino is asking. Um, if there's a motion for that, Commissioner Clements? Just a, uh, they're separate items. So I think item one here, we could modify and leave the Lynn Street south of Midland open. And then the second item is the 500 block. We could vote on that separately, right? Yeah, because they're two different. They're requests. two separate items. Yeah. yeah, I guess I'm talking 
holistically, but, and then what would you want to do with the 700 block of Midland? I think if, as long as Lynn Street's open, we don't have to do anything with the 700 block, right? As long as Lynn Street on the south side of Midland is open, we don't have to do anything to the 700 block. Right, because if we, if we were to go forward with this, I think the engineering department was recommending we had to have the 700 block closed. Will that alleviate some if we just do one side of Lynn? Okay, all right. Right. Okay. Right, we've had that in the past where we've had Correct. the north side of Lynn closed and 600 closed. Right. I mean, I think that would work because you can still come down John Street, turn left on Lynn, right on Midland to the 700. I mean, it's, it works. Is that a motion? To change this to be 600 block and north of Midland Unland? Motion to modify regular agenda item one. J. Sam, I don't need to say all that. No. Motion to modify closing the 600 block and the north side of Lynn, St Lynn Street on the north side of Midland between Lynn and between Midland and Vermont. Okay. Is everybody clear on that? The, what the what the amendment is? Commissioner Clements, would you be so kind as to write that down as well? Or email the clerk? Yep. Sure. You. Okay. Do we have a second for the amendment? Commissioner Gerard? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion on the item as amended? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on the item as amended? If you have questions, please feel free to ask when you get to. Vote. Commissioner Bernie. Yes. Runner? Yes. Hilliker? No. Gerard? Yes. Clements? Yes. Morris? Yes. Dockett? Yes. Rivet? Yes. Seven yes, one no. Motion is approved. Uh, will the clerk please read the next item on the agenda? Regular agenda two, Kevin Novellino requesting approval of an addendum to the retro 60s street party permit, ad adding Additional weekend closures from August 15th to September 2nd, 2024. Thank you. Is there a motion? Commissioner Gerard? Who to approve? Second. Commissioner um, Clements? Second. Thank you. I'm sorry, Commissioner Morris. Um, is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on regular agenda item number two? Commissioner Brunner? Yes. Hilliker? No. Gerard? Yes. Clements? Yes. Morris? Yes. Dockett? Yes. Rivet? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Seven yes, one no. Motion is approved, and will the clerk please read the final item of tonight's agenda? Commissioner Bernie's resolution. Thank you. Is there a motion? Commissioner Bernie? You have to state the motion, Commissioner Bernie. Motion. motion. Move to approve? Move to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Commissioner Morris? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Commissioner Rivet? Call the question. Okay. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Hilliker? I'm sorry? I can't understand. Can I vote with rights? Can you abstain? Abstain from the order? Oh, yeah, you can pass. Abstain from the order. Commissioner Gerard. Clements? So no discussion? Not with call a question. No. Morris? Yes. Dockett? No. Rivet? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Brunner? No. Hilliker? No. Four yes, four no. Uh, motion fails. Um, before we close tonight, I do want to state 
this will come back. Uh, if anyone wants to read it, you're more than welcome to come read it after the meeting, and I'm sure you'll understand. Thank you.